Welcome to lovely Las Vegas. The weigh-in show here with you once again as we are getting ready for UFC 260. About 24 hours away here at the UFC Apex. Stipe Miocic, Francis Ngannou too, and it doesn't get any better than this. A battle for the baddest man on the planet and in just a matter of moments, all 20 of the fighters are going to be coming to this scale for their official weigh-ins. Welcome inside the studio, everybody, here at the Apex. As always, joined by, say, as always, like we've had the show a hundred <laughs> times. This is the second I mean, ever weigh-in show. All of two times, it is as always. Laura Sanko, Dan <laughs> Helley, champ, Aljamain Stollering, and former champ, champ, of course, Daniel Cormier. Aljo, glad to have you here. Man, a little different feel than last time around, isn't it? Yeah, very, very, very different, you know, getting ready to compete and get ready to fight, as opposed to talking about the guys that are getting ready to compete and get ready to fight. You, you can know, eat whatever you want now. It. Yeah, now I can eat everything, and I, you know, my weight's just kind of just going wherever it wants right now. You look at Al Jermaine Sterling, you see he's never had a bad meal. I mean, this guy is a picture of perfect health, <laughs> abs popping. I can see him through his beautiful shirt. I mean, you don't eat bad food, Aljo. I mean, fight camp, no fight camp, you still look as good as you ever look, champ. Thank you. I appreciate Dishing the, the compliments. This is my boy right here. Love Everybody thought we were fighting for a little bit, but that's know, my boy right I know. There. But, you know, about a month removed from that fight, how are you feeling? What's the, what's the status like? Uh, I feel a lot better now. You know, it was a little bit frustrating with everything that the way it happened and all that. But um, I'm just taking my time, just trying to make sure my health is uh, first and make sure that's the main priority, getting back in healthy shape and prime form so I can get ready to compete and take on some of the baddest guys in my division again. Speaking of health, we had to scratch one of the, uh, the big bouts uh, in UFC 260, postponed uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, Brian Ortega. Not going to be happening at UFC 260, perhaps down the road. We hope so. Yeah, you know, this is a massive fight. And when you watch Brian Ortega back on Fight Island against Korean Zombie, you saw a much improved Brian Ortega. But the champion, Alexander Volkanovsky, has two wins over what me many people consider the greatest featherweight of all time in Max Holloway. This young man has cardio, he has wrestling, he has striking, and with the new Ortega, you know that this is a fantastic fight. Unfortunate that it's not happening this weekend. Look forward to it in the future. But champ, first and foremost, get healthy, get over what you're dealing with, and then get back and give those great fights. Yes, 100%. This is a big fight, big opportunity for uh, Brian Ortega, and I was really, really looking forward to him getting out there and uh, just showing what he can do and since his improvements. The fight he had with Korean Zombie, this was my big fight, my big moment to watch and see how much these guys have improved, and I think it was a big fight that a lot of people want to see. Definitely best wishes to Alex, but when you talk about adding tools, I mean, Brian Ortega didn't just add some tools. He went into Home Depot and, like, cleared out the store and brought the store with him to that fight. I cannot wait for these guys to get rescheduled. You want to you look at That's a nice little analogy, Laura. You went to Home that. Depot. Not my first Come on, Laura. That was my second one. Already, rodeo. we're just starting. You can't start shooting the big guns already. All right, let's take a look at what is uh, coming down the pipe tomorrow. Early prelims on ESPN. Mark andre Barrio, Abu Azaitar from Morocco. The Kiwi, Shane Young, taking on Venezuelan kickboxer Omar Morales. Modestas, Bukowskas, and Mihao Olechechuk. Jared Night Train Gooden and uh, Abukar Numagomedov. Off the main card, this gets good. Jamie Malarkey, Kama Worthy. 15th ranked Jillian Robinson against the 23-year-old up-and-comer Miranda Maverick. And the Sugar Show is back after his first loss in the UFC, taking on veteran Thomas Almeida. Our co-main event, Tyron Woodley and... Uh, Vicente Luque, and then, of course, our main event, the title fight, the baddest man on the planet on the line, the champ Stipe Miocic taking on Francis Ngannou. Nobody has more power. John Anik joining us now. Hello, my friend. Good to see you. Stash still uh, looking good. <laughs> and uh, I, I think you're coming into this one slightly more refreshed. You don't have to get ready for 30 fighters, just 20 on this card. And no back-to-back, -back, Dano, so that's a good thing. Just 10 fights, and a lot of the fighters have started to congregate behind me. Jamie Malarkey's here, Jillian Robertson, Miranda Maverick, Modestus Bukowskis is here. We're ready to go, man. 10 fights or 15. Big pay-per-view event coming up here tomorrow night. Sean O'Malley, the first guy that's going to be weighing in here uh, in just a few minutes. But let's talk about the uh, main event here. Nothing quite like a heavyweight tilt for the, uh, the, the title and the baddest man on the planet tag. 
Yeah, the, the enormity of a UFC heavyweight championship fight, no matter who's competing, is never lost on me. And it's interesting because I think the narrative with Francis Ngannou has a lot of similarities to when he fought Stipe back in 2018. Man, could this guy's life change in terms of the superstardom. We've heard DC talk a lot about that this week, if he can break through. He's got north of 2 million Instagram followers right now, so he has resonated with people even without that belt. But he could effectively change his life forever if he can beat Stipe. And for Stipe, man, who knows? You know, no loss of motivation for him and uh, maybe he retires Saturday night with a win. You just never know. So there's a lot at stake and uh, just excited to get the prep done and, and get to fight night. Oh, something I never thought about. That is interesting with Stipe. We'll have to ask him that when he gets up here on set if that's even crossed his mind. And the final pay-per-view in the Apex for now, Anik. It's crazy. I think it'll be our sixth show here, and there's a lot of fond memories in this building. And Aljamain Sterling beating Corey Sandhagen comes to mind, right? That was our first pay-per-view here in the UFC Apex, our second event there back in June of 2020. And having a fight of that magnitude play out that way and hearing Aljo scream and having it just bounce off the walls in here was crazy. And how about DC having his retirement fight here in this arena? So it's been a, a memory-filled Apex, and uh, but I do think I speak for most of us on the broadcast team when I say wheels up to Jacksonville and Houston and we're excited to have the fans, you know, back behind us sooner rather than later. Yeah, no, I'll bet you are. Uh, unlike the Contender Series that I get the uh, opportunity to call where you aren't used to having a big crowd, you're used to feeding off that energy of the fans. What are you most looking forward to, to getting them back in the building? Well, I mean, it's not a crutch for us, but it's certainly a performance enhancer to have that crowd behind you. And, and even though for us, those noise-canceling headphones are a pretty powerful thing when we have to you know, add to a historical UFC championship moment, we can still do that. But it's certainly nice to have that crowd bleeding in. So whether there are hockey boards between us or not, I plan to go over to the stands and, and thank all of those people for, you know, making the commitment to the UFC. They're the lifeblood of this sport. You know, Dana says that all the time, and uh, I believe that to be true. All right, John Anik, the best in the business, going to be calling these fights for us tomorrow and emceeing the weigh-ins today. Anik, thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, guys. As we uh, look at the scale where... The Sugar Show is going to be first one to uh, step up in just a matter of minutes. Guys, we have lined up today Stipe and Francis coming to set. Sean O'Malley is going to be here as well. Vicente Luque will be uh, joining us. Uh, Dana White will be here. Misha Tate, who wow. is making a comeback after a few years off and starting a family, going to be here as well. Um, it's going to be a big day. I mean, it's a big day. That's what happens when you bring a current champ up here to sit and host, right? <laughs> Everybody wants to show up. It's like going to the club or going to the party and it's Aljo's party. Now, if it's Helly's party or DC's party, it might end up a little empty. But an Aljo party, that's the type of party you want to be involved in. Of course it it's is. Don't party. let him steal your thunder because he, he will try to take over the whole stage. It's an Aljo you know. party, man. Okay. I'm just, I'm just coattailing it here with my guy. <laughs> just chill, Haley. Don't try to come between us. No, no. I, I see you guys over there. You look good. You look you're very similar. Six-pack, six-pack. No, oh, no. This is right here. This is <laughs> a case. Start, this is a starting. case right here. This is a 24-pack, baby. We'll I'm that proud of it. Let, let's talk about the reason that we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, this first fight between these two went, went the distance. Um, Stipe kind of had to weather the storm here in the first round. The power that are in Francis's hands are unparalleled. You know, I think this was honestly the round of the year back in 2018. These two massive men just went crazy after each other. This is what round one looked like. It was nuts to see Stipe Miocic stand up to the power of Francis Ngannou. I fought that same night in Boston. And you're riding the wave of a championship win, and you're in the back just losing your mind watching these dudes go at it in the way that they did. But once the fight went longer, once the fight moved into the second round, into the third round, you saw right away Francis had nothing for Stipe over an extended period of time, and Stipe dominated as the fight continued forward. And honestly, I was surprised he didn't finish Francis because he had him in so many bad positions. Yeah, he really did, especially that cross side position where he kind of stepped over into that mounted triangle and started throwing down a couple of punches. Uh, it was really exciting to see just the evolution of Stipe and just how far he's come, just super dominant and a guy who's that scary of a puncher and what he was able to do and bring to the table and just show his elusive boxing skills. It was very, very impressive. It was such a dominant performance from Stipe, and I think what you saw in that fight was not just a, a gap in skill sets, but a chasm in fight IQ. I mean, Francis Ngannou was so green coming into that fight, yeah. when you think about it. Four years doing MMA, period. He didn't grow up wrestling like you guys did. Four years in combat sports. Now, three years later, I mean, that's a lot more experience. I'm so excited to see if Francis Ngannou brings some new tools, but also an improved fight IQ.
All right, UFC 260, hashtag. If you want to join the show, hit us up. If you have a question, maybe we use it on the air. I'll just wait. He's excited. DC's always excited. You know, Sanko might uh, might provide the best answer of anybody on this <laughs> desk, but we're excited to have you be a part of it. We do have a very special guest, a surprise guest that's going to be joining us up here on stage. These guys don't even know who it is, so we're Ooh. looking forward to that. All right, our first weigh-in of the day is our only female fight on the card. Jillian Robertson will be stepping up to the scale in just a moment. The 15th ranked women's flyweight uh, getting ready to walk up to the scale right now. What, what, was this, what is this like right before weigh-ins for you guys? You kind of know if you have it or you don't. What about when you're really close? Uh, it's very exciting. And right now we got Jillian Robertson stepping up to the, to the, uh, the scale. Uh, she trained with Dean Thomas the whole time, so I got to talk to him a little bit. And he said since he's left ATT, she was with him training the entire time, and they brought in Lauren Murphy, who's also on fire. So for her to have that a part of her training camp and a, a mastermind like Dean Thomas is very, very huge. Um, she's a savage for a reason, and uh, she's a BJJ black belt. So I'm very excited to see what she brings to the table against a very tough Miranda Maverick. 125 and a half, the official weight for right on, Jillian right on Robertson. 125. 125. 125 and a half mm -hmm. for Jillian Robertson. That's where you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, she gets to 126, but half pound under what you have to wait for a non-title fight. And Jillian Robertson now will start the rehydration right, process, the feeling UFC's good. This is the this best part, part of the whole the thing. Over. When you get on the scale, make the weight, and then you get to go back and start to recover and look forward to the fight. It's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great thing. It's the fight before the fight. That's absolutely. what I always yes. say. All right, uh, coming up, Jamie Malarkey. Taking on Kama Worthy, that is the uh, first fight on the main card. Laura, Jamie Malarkey is uh, looking to get back on track here. Yeah, he is such an exciting fighter to watch, and I know he he's anxious to get that first UFC win, but, you know, you go back to that fight he had against Brad Riddell, UFC 243. I mean, you cannot help but love how this guy pounds, fights. I'm listening to the Malarkey. weight here. I think he's on. I think he's good. Uh, the way that he, he apps, 155 and a half, I just got it in my ear. Thank you very much. Uh, the way that he brings the fight, I mean, this guy, every single time he comes out. Uh, but this is, you know, he's in a pressure situation. He's got to get this win. Yeah, former rugby player and, uh, and a plumber. And like so many, he was hooked on UFC by watching The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good show. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good show, and it's amazing how many guys that we talk about in the Contender Series yeah. that watch that show and said, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. All right, DC, uh, another light heavyweight step into the scale here, Modestus Bukowska. You know, when you talk about Modestus, this is a young man that has a lot of confidence in himself. He was almost dismissive of Jimmy Crute back on Fight Island. Jimmy Crute was able to beat him and give him... 205 and a half, the official weight for most. He's 205 and a half. Bukowskis. Was able to give him his first loss in the UFC. And to go back and learn as a young fighter is the most important thing that you can do. But you cannot lose that thing that separates you. So that confidence, that almost bit of arrogance that Modestus exhibits is still with him after we spoke to him earlier in the week. Yeah, Jimmy Crute snapped a seven fight win streak for Buskowskis. Miranda Maverick stepping to the scale. Coming up next. Hello, I'm Miranda Maverick, and I fight out of the house of Muay Thai. I'd like to give a shout out to Laura Senko because she's from my home state of Missouri and also because she's from Invicta Fighting Championships and commentated there as well. So I've known her the whole ride up. That's right. I have known Miranda for a very long time. Represent Missouri. Two Missouri girls just out here doing the thing, man. <laughs> uh, but listen, the thing about Miranda Maverick, she is so talented on the feet. We saw that in her UFC debut with those elbows. But you guys haven't even seen the best of what she has to offer, which is in the grappling department. And last night, while she's cutting weight, she's teaching class, guys. She oh, taught wow. so a class crazy. while making weight. She made the weight 26 even. I mean, who does that? Who does that? Yeah, Miranda, Miranda Maverick. Maverick. She's getting her PhD for PhD. <laughs> for Miranda PhD. Maverick. Wild. I mean, come on. Well, hey, do we have a, a... Is this the first... She got a PhD. She's working she, on it. She's going to finish it by the end of the year. Wow, that's a super A doctor impressive. in the UFC. Yes. Yeah. Maybe she can sew well, everybody up after the fights can, are done. Can you imagine having to take classes while you're cutting no. weight and teach classes uh, while absurd. you're cutting weight? That's unbelievable. Mihal Olache Chuck uh, stepping in the scale right now, Laura. Oh, he is so much fun to watch. I mean, he is... 
He is a representation of Polish power, but he's had a couple of couple of tough outings in terms of the grappling department. But on, on the feet, man, he d pressures forward at this ridiculous pace. Really likes to uh, you know pressure his opponents in that area. Seven first round finishes, ten ten wins by knockout. Um, he has some really strong performances against guys like Khalil Roundtree, John Volante, uh, and, and Tigalov as well. And I know he's looking to go out, back out here and, and put on another big one tomorrow. 206 for, the, for Mihiro. 206 on the button. And coming up now, Abukar Numagomedov, uh, another one of these uh, guys who obviously a, a good wrestler. Um, and you, you, know him, uh, you know him well, DC. Yeah, you know, we call him the Dagestan gangster. Manop, we call him Manop, you know, so uh, great guy, you know, a guy that's been in the gym for a long time now with Habib, has really good striking, really good wrestling and grappling, and just another one of the athletes that are part of this Dagestan invasion, you know, the guys are coming over in droves, uh, led by the, the champ here, Habib Nurmagomedov, and they're also willing to learn, also willing to get better and improve, but when you talk about Manop, Manop is a guy that has the personality to match. He's not as quiet. He's not as stoic as the rest of the guys. He's a guy that likes to have fun, but also when it's time to work, Manop is more than willing to work, willing to engage with anybody. And he's 170 and a half pounds. Good to see Manop make the weight. And uh, another guy from AKA and Eagles MMA that's uh, trying to really make an impact in the UFC. Of course, uh, Habib's cousin. And our first fight of the night going to be Marc-Andre Berrio and Abu Azaitar. Uh, DC, what can you tell us about Abu? You know, he's another guy. You know, he's one of those guys, dominant MMA guys. You know, dominant MMA guys. Ali Abdelaziz. Uh, he manages these guys, and he brings them around, right? So you get Abu and his brother in the gym, and you immediately realize that at their core, they're just fighters. Neither one of these guys are willing to back down from anyone, regardless of how big you are. Me, Cain Velasquez, Luke Rockhold, young fighters that just want to get better. So they find the best guy in the room. They, they, they make a beeline towards you, and they start to kind of engage with you, not only talking, but in terms of the training. And honestly, they're not touching you. These guys are trying to knock you out. They're trying to go after you, really earn the respect that they deserve, and show that, hey, man, I'm here to learn. And if getting beat up is what gets me better, I'm willing to go through that. Very impressive young man. Tremendous power. Been away for a little bit, but is looking forward to truly reintroduce himself to the UFC's fans. And a half the official weight for Abu Azaitar. I didn't catch the weight 185 there. and a half. 185 and a half for Abu. Um, just really trying to reintroduce himself to the fans and, and really make an impact uh, in his return to the octagon. Trained with his brother and the Nurmagomedovs. Coming off a, a broken leg a while ago, checking a kick uh, in Ooh. camp, trying to go 2-0 in the UFC. Let's talk about the big fight that we have coming up. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've heard a lot, a lot leading up to this week is how improved Francis Ngannou feels like he is. Yes. But I, I feel like Stipe is a different fighter than the first time they faced off as well. A hundred percent. One of the things I notice is the boxing of Stipe. It's so good. He has very good feints and level changes, and it's kind of like that stutter step that gets you to bite. And then once you throw, he has the opportunity to counter his strikes and, and pick his, his shots. Lonzo Menafield, former college football player at Texas A&M Commerce. Certainly looks the part as he's weighing in. <laughs> Yikes. Jack City. 205 goodness. pounds, the official weight for Alonzo Menafield. You know, when you talk about Stipe and Francis, right, it's hard to gauge the improvements of Francis and Ganu because we really haven't seen much different than we saw on his initial <laughs> run up to a title fight, right? When you yeah. think about outside of the Lewis fight, where it was very tentative, he fought Velasquez, beat him in a minute. He fought Curtis Blades, beat him in two minutes. He fought Giro Dos Santos, beat him in a minute. Then he fought. Jarzinho and beat him in 35 seconds. So it's like, where do you see the improvements when the entirety of his fight time is less than five minutes in the octagon? So it's hard to gauge improvement. Now for Stipe, I know he's gotten better because Stipe Miocic got better from our second fight to the third fight. That's how I know he's improved. We fought a total of 10 rounds between the three fights that him and I had. And from fight one, to fight two, he felt very similar. In fight three, he felt like a different guy. He added new tricks, he was much leaner, he was much smaller, and it felt like his cardio 
stayed with him a lot longer in the third fight. So I know he's better. It's hard to gauge how much better Francis has gotten. Yes, and right now we have Shane Young on the scales. Uh, he's 145 actually and a half, Volkanovski. the official weight for Shane And now they train together. Young. Yeah. Pretty 145 and a half. Pretty impressive. I, I kind of have a similar story like that. You know, you fight someone and you end up training with them. You get an opportunity to learn a lot, mm -hmm. especially coming from a loss. So and that has to be huge for him going down there and training with those those city kickboxing guys. It's like Overeem and Blades. I mean, they got they got together and, and made each other better after their fight as well. I think yeah. I always think so highly of fighters that seek out someone that they lost to and say, hey, I, you know, I can come learn from you. It's but hard too because of the ego. Yes. Right? Yes. It's but so hard for side. fighters, right? Because mo most fighters are ego driven. They use that to motivate them. That's why we are how we are. But um, when you can put that aside and then go and learn, good for you. Yeah. I, I could have never done it. I'm telling you that right now. I could have never done that and went and trained with anybody that, that I lost to. Just never would have happened. Really? It, nope. Well, he lost his debut to Volkanovski, and he's 2-1 and he's and since then, so certainly... Uh, and he's the champ. Yeah. 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 Sean O'Malley. You're not training with John anytime soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> nope. Just kidding. Nope. Why, why are you Horse trying to stir the pot? We're, 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 we're 20 minutes into the show. All right, here's Sean O'Malley. What's up, guys? It's Sugar Sean O'Malley. I'm fighting out of Arizona. Uh, I'm going to go out there and put Thomas's lights out Saturday night. He's on. 136, even. Yeah. 136 well, pounds, the, top, the official he's on the weight. weight. I don't understand what took so long, Obama. right? Yeah. If it goes to the top and it breaks a little bit and it doesn't just shoot up, you're fine. If he's 136.2, that little thing is going to touch the top of the scale. I don't know what you took so long. You got that down to a science, huh? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you do it as long as I do. <laughs> if that thing doesn't touch, the moment it, it breaks the top, I was jumping off the scale and I was drinking something. Yeah. Because you ain't putting me back on there. <laughs> how, how different is this for the Sugar Show now that he's lost the fight? Not just his first UFC loss, but his first professional loss, Aljo. I think it's um, fascinating because of his mindset, the way he sees this whole thing, you know? He doesn't feel like he fight. lost. Just from what I've Crazy. in the past. What am I going to do next? It's always the question. I'm going to continue to go out there and put on the performance. Yes, it doesn't feel like he's lost in his mind, but we all know what happened when he stepped out there. He, he took a loss from a, a legal kick. There was nothing foul or, you know, ill play at it. So for him to have that and still have this mindset, it says a lot about him. Um, I think he's a very talented young man. I think he's got a lot of skill set. He's got a high ceiling. And I think the, the sky's the limit for a guy like this. But... but is it weird? Is it weird, though? That he hasn't come to terms with that because part of I don't of think I don't think it's that DC. I really? really don't think it's that. I don't think he's a sore loser. I think he genuinely feels like he has a better skill set uh -huh. than Cheeto Vera. But it he doesn't was doing matter. Well on that fight. night, he lost I, the fight. I'm right? with exactly. you. We I'm saw with it. You. I was there. Like we yeah. saw, he lost the fight. I'm with you. I just don't think. I don't think it's like oh he can't wrap his mind around it or he can't come to, to terms with it. I think it's what he feels like he needs to tell himself about that fight because he felt like he was winning the fight and he felt like that kick was one in a million because of the way the toe hit the common peroneal nerve, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. He told, he told Take them, that or not. He but, said that, right? He yes. said that on multiple occasions to multiple people, but the reality is he lost <laughs> the fight. I'm, with you. I'm not matter. arguing that. I'm not like, arguing that I know that you're part. not, but I'm saying like he lost the fight and there is something to saying, you know what? I lost. I got to get better. But he believes he's the better fighter. It That's doesn't it matter. He should say that. I believe I'm the better fighter, but I lost. Not that I don't consider myself undefeated still mentally. That, that, that yes. type yeah, of thing. Yeah, I, I get mean, what you're stirring. saying, Lord, because a lot of times it's, sure. it's mental, right? You got to yeah. tell yourself whatever you need to get yourself going and being the same person. But I think when you're young like that, you got to take those experiences, the good and the bad, yes. in order to form yourself into the fighter that you hope to be. How, my, my, my question for you guys is how much is... The perennial nerve, the leg issue. Now, I know it's been two different things, but in five UFC fights, he's had a leg or foot issue in two out of those five fights. Is he going to be, if he, if he takes a couple of calf kicks early, is that going to get in his head? I, I think it could. You know, I, I think when you start to see these guys who are super lean and are coming down to a weight class, I think eventually you have to start looking at a different weight class so you could bulk up a little bit, have a little bit uh, more mass. I think when you're super lean like that, it poses issues, especially all the time for like calf kicks, which is the new thing in MMA. So it's very scary because this guy comes out, starts blasting calf kicks. 
We never know. It might be the same exact story all over again. And that's the thing. Thomas Almeida, <laughs> I mean, that shoot a box style, yeah. hands up, guard up, nailing those kicks in. I mean, it, I think we're going to see very early in this fight if what you said is true, Eljo, if that is something playing in the back of his head. But Thomas Almeida, I mean, listen, he's had a bit of a tough run, but you got to go back and you got to watch these fights where he is lighting guys up, knocking people out, marching forward every single moment of the fight. I'm fascinated to see if in this fight, if we if we might see a more tentative Thomas Almeida because he just needs the W. He needs the win so badly. Or are we going to see that typical Thomas Almeida march forward, shoot a box style, and go out there and just light him up? I'm I anxious saw, to see. I saw Thomas Almeida in his approach in, in those highlights, right? He's doing so much with his hands. In this fight against O'Malley, he cannot just be using his hands. Yes. Especially when O'Malley has shown a bit of a weakness to leg damage, right? The leg damage has showed itself in multiple occasions. Almeida needs to use more of his kicks, use more of his grappling, and intends to do that. He'll tell anybody that'll listen he wants to pressure O'Malley. But if he's boxing with O'Malley, we have seen Sean O'Malley has dynamite in his hands. So I think that's playing with fire. But Thomas Almeida has lost, but he's fought everybody. Yes. All the best fighters in the world as a young guy, he fought them. So you see, in those times, guys take losses. I mean, even the best fighters take losses to people like Cody Garbrandt and all those guys, right? Why wouldn't Thomas Almeida, as a young athlete, take losses to those guys? He's dangerous as ever. Yep. The 29-year-old Brazilian won the first 21 fights of his pro career, but he's lost four out of his last five. And you guys know as well as anyone that it's it's mental as much as physical. So the question is, I guess, going into this one, uh, where where is his mental state right now going into this one against the Sugar Show? Which is really, he gets like the entertainment factor of this. And everybody knows when you fight O'Malley, you're on the big stage. There's a lot more eyeballs than there would normally be if you fight somebody else. Almeida going to be the next one to uh, hey, weigh in here in just a minute. What about you guys? How do you guys at the weight feel about that with O'Malley. A guy that doesn't have as many victories, hasn't done the things that you guys have done, but seems to be this star, right? And even though he lost, whether he says it or not, <laughs> he still gets the pay-per-view spot and he still seems to be the same type of star. Yeah, I think it's just the enigma about him. He's just a special kind of guy who brings that, like, charisma that you see in, like, a guy like Conor McGregor, you know? So I think no matter what, I think it's good for the sport. It's good for the weight class because we get a lot of people who are tuning in to see this bandweight division because it's on fire. There's so many guys that are so good from the top five, top ten, top 15, and even outside of that. It's just division is just super deep. Yeah, and, and a lot of people turning in to see the uh, the heavyweight tilt that we have coming up too with Stipe and Francis Ngannou. Uh, you can weigh in on Twitter. We have a question coming in from uh, Arlindo Quinta for you, DC. If you were fighting the beast himself, Francis Ngannou, how would you approach the fight in UFC 260? I mean, let, let me ask you a question, <laughs> right? What DC are we talking about? The 40 year old DC or the guy that was younger and could actually wrestle? I'm wrestling. I mean, I'm wrestling Francis as early as possible. The moment I can get close, I'm taking the same approach I took against Derek Lewis. I'm trying to back him up to the side of the octagon, get to a leg, and put him on the ground. Because the, every moment that he's standing, especially early, this dude has a chance to knock you out. I've dealt with this puzzle before. I fought Anthony Johnson twice when guys couldn't last a minute with Rumble. The, the thing was, get in his face, try to pressure him, put him to the ground. And if you're Miocic, you're doing it earlier this time because you saw the effect it had on him in the first fight. So get Francis Ngannou to the ground immediately if you're one of his opponents. It is absolutely wild to think about the almost urban legend type status that his power has garnered for him in a, in a division where everybody has power. Yeah. And here, sorry, here comes Thomas Almeida to the scale. But it, it's just unbelievable, DC, to think about, you know, the way that his power is revered. Almeida's like, rocking those beautiful shades. Geez, yeah. <laughs> One thirty-six even. The official weight: one hundred and thirty-six pounds for Thomas Almeida. This is a great fight. I mean, evenly matched fight. This could be fireworks between these two because Almeida, for all that he says, all the skills that he's uh, got, he's gotten over the course of his career, dude's a fighter, and if you hit him. He's going to get in your face and try to get it back. And Sean O'Malley, we know, is looking to knock you out. Yeah. I think um, it's, a, it's a very fun matchup. 
And like I said, this bantamweight division is on fire. So whoever wins this is really going to propel them to that next level, especially when you got so many eyes on you, like a guy like Sean O'Malley brings to the octagon. You know, so this is a very important fight for the weight class. Yeah, we, we forget he started four and zero in the UFC. He was the young up and comer a he few was. years ago. He and was he, Sean O'Malley, right? Yeah. He, 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 exactly. He still is Sean O'Malley. He's only lost He's once, you guys. No, I'm talking about, we're talking about Thomas Almeida. Almeida. Uh, Almeida's I got only you, 29 I got you, I got you. years old. I mean, the guy's 29 yes. years old. Yeah. You know what's the beauty in this, though? Is Almeida has seen this type of hype before. Yes. Because of the guys that he's had to fight. So if anyone's going to be able to live in the situation, it's Thomas Almeida. And learn from that, that position he was in against Cody Garbrandt. Absolutely. You know? Everybody's made weight so far. Here's a look at the numbers for the five fighters uh, who have weighed in. Uh, you can weigh in, by the way. Uh, oh, those are the first five. We've had 11 actually weigh in so far, so we're over halfway through. Uh, here's a look at the others. And you can weigh in, by the way. Speaking of weigh in, hashtag UFC 260. Hit yeah, us up on Twitter. We've already US taken a question for D.C. Aljo would be happy to answer him. Laura would be happy to answer him. We're here for you. We're serving the people. <laughs> Mark andre Barrio coming up to the uh, scale right now. Aljo? I, I think with Barrio, the, the theme for him right now is setbacks. You know, I, I think he's trying to get back to his winning ways. He was a two-division champ at his former promotion. And, uh, you know, he has five first-round finishes. So for him to get this opportunity to, to get things back on the right the track and, and get his first UFC win and break that skid, uh, I think is very important for him here. So I think he's looking forward to, to right the ship and make those changes, and I think he's done a lot of homework. So I'm, I'm super excited to see what he brings to the octagon tomorrow night. Well, he thought he had a win in his last fight. Um, they ruled that no contest after a... 185 pounds, the official weight for Marc-Andre Barrio. 185 after a failed drug test. Two-division champion of the TKO that, banner in Quebec. That speaks to Aljo's point, right? The setbacks, right? From getting his first win, having it overturned, to the losses in a row, to, to all those things that he's had to deal with. You know, that's, that's uh, Overcoming all of that is very difficult, and Barrio finds himself in a tough spot. Can he do... Like Aljo said, overcome those things in order to put himself on the right track. Good yes. spot for this young man. It's the mental aspect as well, you know, just get over that hump, you know. So you have to really tell yourself the right things to going forward. So everyone dreams about getting to the UFC and then getting their first win. So to have it overturned, I'm pretty sure he's just clamoring to just get his first win and, and do it the right way and uh, yes. be super happy about that. Thirsty. Thirsty for that first win. I'm, I'm sure he oh, can't yeah. wait. Uh, <laughs> our our co-main event. Thirsty. Right? I mean, we is. Hashtag He's thirsty. Thirsty. Uh, oh, Tyron Woodley. Vicente right Luque here. is our, our co-main event. This is a top 10 matchup, Sanko. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing this one as well. I'm dying to see uh, Tyron Woodley back in the octagon because, I don't know, I, I think when you look at the interviews that he did this week, more than ever, you are just seeing a raw honest tyrant and you hear him talk about his training the way that he's had to sort of hearken back to the you know the rough streets that he grew up in that violent mentality he was so used to being able to knock guys out with that right hand and play that more strategic lay back and wait lay back and wait chess game but he said coming into this fight he is in touch with that button of violence that he has within himself and I'm dying to see if he's able to go out there and push it the way that he needs to. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think with Tyron Woodley, we've seen him have those devastating finishes. And then to kind of be on the skid that he's on, it just kind of looks like he's freezing up out there and just not letting it go and being Tyron Woodley that's the chosen one, the one who became a UFC champion, took out the boogeyman and Robbie Lawler, um, crushed Josh Koscheck. You know, I, I think if he could get back to f figuring out what was it that got him firing on all cylinders to just let it go? Just go out there, have fun. You never know what's going to happen. So just be you and have fun out there. We're, we're still waiting on uh, Woodley and uh, Vicente to weigh in. Actually, we're waiting on our co-main event and our main event. We have eight fighters to go. They haven't left the hotel yet, so we're going to be uh, waiting a few minutes for those final eight. We have 12 down. They've all made weight, uh, waiting on our final eight fighters to way in. And the, the heavyweights can wait all the way till They 11. love to take their time, yeah. guys. They love... Well, they just kind of show that they're not cutting any weight, right? They can go whenever they want to. And understanding, <laughs> understanding now with the way things are, there are the face-offs. So why would you go early and then you're just sitting around waiting for the face-offs at the end of the weigh-ins, right? So you, when you're the champ, you're Steve Amy Oates, you're going, I'm going to go at 1045. I'm going to weigh in. 
and then I'm gonna get up on after I scale, hit the scale. I'm gonna wait a few minutes till I have to do my stare down. You know, because right now it's a lot of wasted time for a lot of these athletes. They're gonna go into recovering, but they have to stay and wait until uh, the faceoffs go down, which is probably gonna be not till around 11:30. So, so, so what what are they doing that time? Are they just pounding? Protein shakes. You don't pound. No, you don't pound. pound nothing. You can't pound anything. <laughs> I mean, Helly, you have to drink everything slow for about an hour because otherwise you'll get diarrhea. You may want to throw up. It's like so many different elements to uh, trying to rehydrate. One is just what you're taking in. You're not taking in anything super cold. You know, you want cold stuff when you're cutting weight, right? Yeah. It's all you want. Feels just, good, right? You take that thing that makes you feel good right away. It makes you sick. Yeah. It feels like you're overheating, but, you know. <laughs> Here, here's a look at uh, some of the guys we have s still to weigh in now. Back, back to Woodley. Um, you know, he's talked a lot about how he grew up and, you know, I, gang banging and fighting in the streets and how, as a professional fighter, it became more of a job and he approached it as such. And now he wants to get back to thinking in his mind that it's more life or death when mm -hmm. he gets back into the octagon. Are you able to flip that switch once it, it's gone off, Aljo? I think it's tough, man. So there's like a saying, like it's hard to get out of bed when you're like sleeping in satin sheets, you know? So I could imagine just the luxury of him being the champ and defending the belt a couple of times. He's probably super comfortable where he is. And sometimes that can take away from that fire and that, that drive and that, that mean that you had that got you to where you want, once were, you know? So I think if he can get that back and figure out what's that trigger to, to really turn it on, I think we could have a scary Tyron Willie in there, but he has to be the one to let it go. You know, I, I really believe that for T. Wood, it's the level of competition, right? He's fought the best of the best, right? So he fought the champ. He lost. He fought the number one contender in Gilbert Burns. He lost. Then he fought Colby Covington, the former interim champion, and he lost. So he's fighting the highest level of mixed martial arts. But I think for T. Wood, it's all in the approach because what allowed him to become the champion before will not be present for him right now. Because the way people attack him is different. When he goes into that sit-back style waiting for the right hand, people aren't afraid of it anymore, so they just overwhelm him. And then he gets so far behind that it's like an avalanche, right? He can't stop it. That's why he's lost like 15 rounds in a row. Because they're not afraid of that punch anymore, so they're just overwhelming him. And then how is he going to get out of that first gear? He's not been able to do that. So I think his whole approach has to change if he wants to make another run at a championship because I don't believe that this fighting style is going to be as uh, productive as it was prior. Well, and I wonder if he gets out of first gear a little quicker now because this is his first three-round fight as mm. opposed to a five-round fight in forever. And there's a lot of chatter online, hashtag UFC 260. If you have questions, we are here to answer it's busy, man. It's busy on Twitter and Instagram. Everybody talking about. I UFC. love watching Francis and Gano take those body shots from. Why is he doing that? I don't understand why he's doing that. <laughs> it's just thing. It's his shtick on Instagram. <laughs> but look at that outfit Francis is wearing. I mean, boy. Oh, that's next level. The king of Africa. He's looking good. That I was, mean, uh, that was at the press conference. Dude's looking good, man. Looking like a champion, right? Looks like a champ. The champ Stephen Miocic is having his son in the summer, so big things going for both of these guys. Uh, inside and outside the do, octagon. Do they make that outfit in like a shorter version for you, DC? I mean, I don't know, man. I can't pull that off like oh, yes, that. My okay. skin color's not yes, dark enough, and I'm just not muscular enough. You know, I got that round <laughs> around the middle. All that round in the middle might make that look like I might be, you know, it ain't good. <laughs> uh, let, let's, talk, let's talk about the man that uh, Woodley's going to be facing, Vicente Luque. Um, he's the 10th ranked uh, welterweight contender, you know, coming off back-to-back -back wins. And th this is a guy... That, He's 12 and one as a pro. I mean, this is uh, this is this is a guy who has done everything we've had. 12. I take it back. He's 12 and two in his last 14. His only losses to Stephen Thompson and Leon Edwards. I mean, this this is a bad man here, Senko. Absolutely. Listen, Vicente Luque has been flying under the radar for way too long. But if you've been paying attention, you've been seeing violence after violence. He can sub you up. He can knock you out. He has a very uh, fundamental skill set on the feet, but the chin of this guy is what absolutely blows my mind when you watch him fight. I mean, that fight with, uh, I think it was Barbarena. Wild, wild what those two were doing to each other. And he just kept going. What he did to Mike Perry's nose, my goodness. I cannot <laughs> wait for this fight. Is pressure gonna is pressure gonna be the key 
for him, Aljo? I really do think so. For a guy like Vicente Luque, who prides himself on just going forward, having that high guard, it was hands up, and he's just chopping away with those leg kicks, going to the body, and his good, crisp boxing, like Laura said. His fundamentals are super clear. Yes. And I think that's going to be the difference for him. And especially seeing the other past fights of Tyron Woolley, he knows, I just need to push this guy back because Woolley's not going to throw anything. Yeah. That's probably what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. So Woolley's need to, you know, he needs to change it up. But that's, yep, exactly. Vicente Luque, man, he's, he's a bad man. Well, that's what we're talking about, right, Aljo? Like, for T. Wood, he has to make guys realize he's going to throw back in their direction because if you don't, Vicente Luque, with his beautiful striking and his confidence, right, He's a, a guy that started here so young. Remember we did the Ultimate Fighter team, Black Zillions versus mm -hmm. team, uh, American Top Team? Yeah, yeah. And he was on that way back in the day as a young man, right? This whole time, he's been honing his craft, but not outside of the octagon. He was doing this in the middle of the highest level of competition as a young man. So when you see Vicente Luque today as a 28, 29-year-old, think about the eight years he's been here. He got here as a kid. You guys, you guys ready for a little game? Last yeah. show we played some games. <laughs> you yes, ready? we are. Okay, let's do a little rapid fire here. Quick answers. Ladies first. Okay. Buy or sell. You ready? Yes. yes. All right, buy or sell. Is Francis Ngannou the scariest puncher in UFC history? I'm buying that all day long. I'm buying that all day long. I mean, it has been proven that the man hits like a literal car. It was it like a Ford... Escort? Escort, which I feel like we could pick a better car for you, Francis. It's such a terrible car. It still weighs over a it's ton. It's still a car. It's still a car. He's, he hits like a car. I mean, that's absolutely wild. You think about people like, I don't know, Rumble Johnson comes to mind, Dan Henderson with that H-bomb, but Francis Ngannou, for me, uh, yes, I'm buying that all day long. All right, scariest puncher in the UFC, buying or selling? I'm buying. I think a guy like Francis Ngannou, he connects one time, he's sending your head to... The unit, the just out, out of space, you know, just going out there to Pluto somewhere. So, um, very dangerous guy. I do not want to get hit by a guy like that because I'm a small guy, man. Him hitting me is like, <laughs> I don't know, that's scary. Bye. Because when you can do the things wrong that Francis does at times and still knock out people in the way that he does, you absolutely have tremendous power. Hold on. Didn't I see somewhere where you said he wasn't the hardest puncher in the UFC? No, I never said that. You didn't say that? No. Okay. He just goes no, like I'm very goes, aware. I'm okay. very big. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Big, big, okay. Big, 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 big. I thought you might have said Might have been one of my days. You know, yeah. It just depends on what, oh. what side of the bed I wake up on. You know, I'm Listen. either hating or I'm giving, like, compliments. <laughs> the look you know? on your face is like, <laughs> no. We need, no. we need no. one camera always fixed on DC. It needs to be a liar cam yes. or a cheater, a cheater cam. cam. One of the a two. You saw what happened last week. All right, fact or fiction. With a Bieber tired, is Stipe the greatest... Male, pound for pound, UFC fighter. Fiction. For me, uh, earmuffs, DC, earmuffs, DC. Uh, for me, it's John Jones. I think that you have to look at the title defenses. What John did early in his career, the youngest champion ever, you, we, go, we, you know, we have this recency bias. You gotta go back and remind yourself what it felt like to watch John Jones years back. Sorry, DC. I'm saying fiction as well. I'm I'm with Laura. I think John Jones is one of the greatest of all times right it's now. Not just me. And uh, the same thing. I know DC. I'm sorry, man, but just you look at his streak and how young he was able to acquire the belt. It's right. very very impressive. I'm sorry, DC. I love you, but um, I've I mean, been we're there. Right. I've been we're there too. Right. You can be pro John Jones without being anti DC. Yeah, by of the course. Way. I love DC. It's my guy. I don't think he just go that. on. Just go on to the next. I refuse to answer. You guys keep answering Jones. I'm not answering. You're I'm out of this. You're playing the fifth. Yep, please. You got could be. A B retired. They actually said it went retired. Hold on. You know, so. I, I need I need direction from our bosses in the booth. Are they I allowing can, I DC can opt to pass? Out. I can opt out. DC's okay. opting out. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I got it. All right. By yourself. Sean O'Malley, the bi biggest success story from Dana White's Contender Series, Laura. Uh, I think it depends on how you define success, and I'm going to be a complete simp, and I'm going to say Grant Dawson. You know why? Because Grant Dawson is 5-0. and oh. He's in a very tough featherweight, now lightweight division, and he may not have a number by his name, but that is due to the fact of the division that he's in. Now, Sean O'Malley, much more Instagram followers. I'm just saying, Grant Dawson undefeated. I, I have to go with uh, Sean O'Malley. And the reason I say this is because look at what he's done with his following and his platform since coming from the Dana White Contender Series. He's just blown up exponentially. It's insane. It's almost meteoric, just like Conor McGregor. For him to do what he's done in such a short amount of time is nothing short of impressive. Although he does have that one loss, that one yeah. blemish, even though he's undefeated, <laughs> undisputed right now. You know, honestly, love Sean O'Malley and what he's done. Alex Perez, 
first guy to fight for a championship off the contender series. Yeah. You know, I think when you're talking about who's most successful, you talk about what they've done and accomplished inside the octagon. Perez fought for a championship. First guy to do that or gal to do that off of the contender series, he to me is the most successful. All right. I like those answers. All right. Buy or sell over under one and a half rounds. Steve and Francis. Uh, buy or sell over one and a half rounds. Uh, I buy that. I buy that. I think um, I think that these guys are going to take a little bit more of a technical approach. And, man, the chins on both of them. Stipe's shown he can weather Francis' punches. Francis has an excellent chin. I, I, I normally wouldn't say that in a heavyweight fight, but I'm feeling it. I'm feeling a long fight here. Okay. Uh, buy or sell under. You're going over. Do you buy, are you buying or selling if I'm saying it's under uh, a round and a half? In this fight? I'm, I'm selling. I'm selling 100%. I mean, if you look at Stipe, you look at Francis Ngannou, I think if Francis comes in and he gets frustrated and he starts swinging crazy like he did in the first fight, I, I can see Stipe kind of just having his way and the duration of the fight going longer than it needs to. So, I so, believe so, it's going longer. So Me you guys too. all think it's going longer than Yeah, it's a very confusing yeah. question. I know. I was, <laughs> as I was very, asking you, it's a very confusing question. I felt really dumb answering yeah. it the first yeah. time. It's a very confusing <laughs> question. So Let me I'm rephrase that. Is this fight going to go over one and a half rounds? Going, yes. Listen, it's hard because it almost puts you in a position where you're almost picking, right? Because it seems like under a round and a half, Francis Ngannou wins. Over a round and a half, Stipe Miocic wins, right? So it's like you're almost picking the fight by answering the question. And um, since I'm calling the fights, I don't have to answer the question oh because gosh. that would put me in a situation where I'm picking the fight. So I'm not going to answer. He went I don't from have cheating to. to just not even playing. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. do you mean I'm playing the game? I'm just saying I don't, get in two I don't want to get in trouble by the boss. <laughs> the boss is listening to me right now. That's a good point. And I'm not allowed to ch- pick the fight. I'm so. over it. Okay, uh, true or false, Tyron Woodley needs a finish to prove that he's back. Uh, true. True. I think I think we need to see not just a performance from Tyron. I think we need to see a finish. I think we want to see the Tyron of old with that big right hand. I think false. He just needs to get a win to show people that he can compete still with the best in the world. And I think that's the most important thing for him. Just get the monkey off your back and just get a dub. Get yeah, that yeah, dub. yeah, for sure. True and false for me because um, <laughs> he just needs a win. This is but unreal. if he can get a knockout, then it'll seem like the tyrant of old. But if I so true and false right for me now, I would. is where I'm going. You, you are, you are. <laughs> what? What? You are the human version Wish of Switzerland. Wash. Why? Yeah, Mr. Feeny oh, over here. What Take a He's stance. He's over here. Wish and wash him. Wish and wash him. Oh, my, my goodness. God. Okay, which unranked fighter on the cards can have a number next to their name uh, before the end of this year? Uh... I think the most obvious choice is Miranda Maverick. I mean, she's taking on Jillian Robertson, who has the 15, if she gets past Jillian Robertson, which I think she has a good chance of doing. Uh, she's going to steal that number. But beyond that, Miranda Maverick just has a phenomenal skill set that I think can really take her places in this women, women's flyweight division. All right, Al, Joe, you're scoping it out right now. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Sean O'Malley. I'm, I'm on the uh, Sugar Show. I'm on the train, you know. You know, I, we might fight one day, but, you know, I'm still on the Sugar Show train. I think he's just very talented, and uh, he's, this is his fight to lose, and I think the world's at his fingertips. You know, um... Let me guess you're going to pass. This one's very difficult. To, <laughs> <laughs> this one's very <laughs> difficult to choose. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, uh, they're telling me to rap. Um, oh, my gosh. They're telling me to rap <laughs> no, and go not. to the next no, one. I'm not. sorry. No, they're they're telling me in my ear to rap. I don't know. What, what I am I supposed to it. do? If they're telling me to rap, what am I supposed okay, to do? Okay, Zach just said in my ear that is not true. They did they not They just told to me to rap. Like, they just told me I to rap. I didn't hear no, that. I'm, it's in my ear. There's a lot of things you want to emulate when it comes to Daniel Cormier, which you have seen in the last <laughs> three to five minutes. What do you mean? This is not one of them. Answer the question. Get off the fence, Mr. Feeney. I'm going to say Miranda Maverick because I truly believe that not only well, I pick yours. I was even with you. Come on, it's a compliment. I'm saying Miranda Maverick because I don't think that not only is she going to be ranked. I think Mar- I'll take it a step further. Miranda Maverick will be in the top five oh. by the end of the year. Oh. See that? Miranda Maverick will be in the top five oh. by the end of the year. Answer the That's question. what I'm saying, right? You want me to take it to the next level? You want this? You it's want this? It's about time you, know you provided a little substance. You know, what? you know what? I can't wait till our special guest comes out here because it it it's going to surprise you. Really? It's going to be a wow. big surprise for you. Who is it? I'm not going to tell you. We have you guys have got some pressure on me. We're starting to sweat out here. All right. We are one minute away from that special guest who's going to be out here in just a minute. I'm out here moment. starting to sweat. Okay. <laughs> fight of the night is going to be who? 
Fight of the night. Uh, I think Menafield Charant, okay? Fabio Charant coming like into that. this fight three days wow. notice. Uh, I called his fight back in February when he won that light heavyweight title in the LFA. This guy is the real deal. He had a setback on Contender Series, but he was winning that fight until he ate, uh, I believe it was a knee. I'm telling you guys, this, 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 guy's, this guy's good. I think that's going to be a great fight. Uh, I'm going with the Jamie Malarkey and uh, Love that. Kama Worthy. I think that's going to be a fun fight. Both guys coming forward and uh, going for it. Both heavy hitters and both guys never quit. So I think that's the most important thing about oh, that's that. That's a great answer, Aljo. That's a great answer, Laura. Um, I'm going to pick, uh, yeah, Stipe Miocic and Francis Ngannou. I think this is going to be my answer. <laughs> Listen, what? What? I it don't get it. It's supposed to be what? Fight they, of the night. Flying under the radar. It's going to be flying under the radar. Night. You think that's flying under the radar? I, Wait I, a didn't, I, didn't what? I didn't technically ask. I didn't technically ask. He did Yeah, so, so I think it's going to be Francis and Stipe. I think that <laughs> when you get a small octagon and these two guys locked in there, they're going to just go crazy, just like last time. So I'm going out on the limb. What do you want me to do? Here's uh, what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to look out there and see our special guest oh my gosh. walking so onto the stage, and I want you to say hi. Oh, oh this nice. guy. <laughs> wow, brother. How are you, brother? Let me see. You look good? What is this one? Uh, hey, but hey, up, but he has. Oh, my guy. How are you? Can I say he has a yes. uh, wow. he has a present for you. DC. No, it's a special gift I, I have for him. Okay, well this first first I have for him. First no, he has one for you. for you. This is for you. This is the, your five star. Yeah. No. Yes, I think you oh, deserve wow. this. Come on, come on, you're lying. Yes, you can't. Right, you're you're the ratings adjuster for everybody, but yes. you can't give yourself a five star rating in UFC EA Sports. So. Habib is here to give that to you. You are now a five star. <gasps> what? That's you don't like this. If you I don't like this. Give me this. Wait, wait, stop. <laughs> wow. Stop. You are now today even more powerful than I even thought. <laughs> five star? Me? Yeah, five star? Yeah. What about you? <laughs> I How like many of you? I hope five. Five no, star, like, my like, guy, two guys, so AKA so five <laughs> star guy. Wow. There's not many five star guys. Let's take a look, look at the list this. of the uh, EA Sports <laughs> UFC 4. Uh, guys who have the, look how, I haven't seen him this happy in a long time. I haven't been happy in a while. I thought, I thought when I lost the last fight, I was never getting the five no, stars. No. Uh, Habib, he may put that on a wear that right on. now. Put Habib, that you want the bling? I want to put him like, like old school, you know? Look, like at, all, look school, at all the like five star fighters here. Freestyle style, you know this. Yes, please, like master of sport. Wait, I'm not yes. on the list. Look at the names on this, on this <laughs> list, Sanko. Ooh. I mean, it's the best of the best. Well, you got yeah, Izzy well, and okay. Max and John Jones and Nunes, yes. Habib. Valentina. Can I do this? Who's I this? Right? I see Daniel Cormier. Can I do this? Okay. This is gonna look good on you. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, take me. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. We did, we did just yeah, find out that Stipe is. Do you need a uh, woman to come help you? Okay. Stipe's on his way come to the uh, Apex okay. right now from the oh, hotel oh, to oh. weigh in. Um, <laughs> this is a pretty cool scene right here. <laughs> okay. Now we have two of these. Wow. So this, again, wow. is the five-star yeah. medallion for EA Sports UFC wow. 4. DC hey, joining the club. Is that big enough? He and is now the eight-star you have Please. been waiting for. <laughs> oh, there we go. Vanilla's five-star hey, member guys. of the EA Sports <laughs> UFC 4. What about me? Say this one. And now. And now. This is the moment. Hey. You see how, like, since like 2012, I mow people. I hope I deserve this too. Lift the, uh, lift your here, up, Habib. Let, let me, let me, right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, push sorry, this. I'm gonna sorry. push this in. Sorry. You gotta sit in it and pop it up. Ah, okay. Hey, let me tell you something, man. I thought <laughs> that I wasn't gonna get this, and this makes me very happy. How's that you know? feel? How's that feel? It, it's heavy. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's shiny. Gold. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, it's, it's real. You know, gold. you know why it's good because you look so preppy with your sweater, your little yeah. quarter zip sweater. That I mean, now you're blinged out. I mean, I'm bling. I mean, listen, listen. <laughs> this is the real deal, Habib. Habib, I had no idea. I, I am very excited about this. It, listen, for a man that has accomplished just about everything, this <laughs> makes me excited. Very, very excited to get it from my friend here, my brother. Thank you. Thank I you appreciate so it, bro. You deserve this. Habib, you how did you do it? How did you train in the same gym as him for so long? Uh, I mean, did, did he ever? Did he ever wear you down? Did you ever have to wear earplugs? Like you know, it's like uh, training with these guys. Like 
all of these years, like since like 2012, it was like uh, same time it was fun, but same time it was very hard because he knows like he is like very funny. He like to joking, but w but when times come, he stop and he work very hard. You know, it's like and I know it's like. We finish sparring day and he say, hey, tonight, don't be late, 7 p.m. is bike. And I think and I think about this, wow, tonight is going to be very hard one hour. It's like, you know, it's like, say, say, like same time is like very funny and sometimes he joke, but when time come, he kill everybody in the, in the gym. Well, mm -hmm. I know there's hard there working. so much mutual respect there. How, how are you going to, what's going to keep you motivated now in, in, in retirement? Keep me? Yes. Honestly, like I just uh, all night I didn't sleep because I was was uh, making weight with my brother, with my cousin. He's fighting this weekend, and um, like uh, to going to cage, nothing to motivate me. But uh, I have so many um, close people who help me become champion and become big star. And uh, now they keep competition. That's why I'm here to help these guys and. Uh, stay around them, give them good energy, control their uh, training camp, and uh, this is big motivation for me now. You know, Habib, when we talk about Manap, right, and he's a guy that, like you said, jokes, has a great personality, yeah. but really is driven to be as good, if not better, than every one of us in the gym. What can we expect from him tomorrow night? How's he look during training camp? Like, uh, I never see him like uh, he focused now. You know, it's like he very focused now. He just make weight very good. Now he recovering. Like uh, I think uh, he's he is now on his best shape. My opinion, because I know this guy all my life. We training since when I when was kids, and um, now he feel very good. You know, uh, like uh, he is almost like 31 years old. He's mentally and physically time. Come, come together. together. Yeah. Yep. And I think it's gonna be his best performance tomorrow night. There were a, a few months there between when you said, I'm retired, and when Dana finally was willing to announce it. And I know that there were meetings and dinners and whatnot between that time. And as a fan, I know I was dying to know, what were those dinners like? What, how, much, how much of it was business talk, and how much were you guys just, just hanging out? Like, you know, like, first of all, I want to say, guys, like, it's very hard to say no to Dana White. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like, it is. I, it I'm, really I'm, is. I'm going to be honest, because this guy come, like, uh, Sometimes he is nice, sometimes he is not nice. Yes, like sometimes he say one thing, like like anyways it was like very honest real talk with two real men. This is what I feel. And uh, in the last meeting he come and he say, "Hey, what we going to do?" I say nothing change. Nothing change and I think like just my opinion like lightweight division have to go on. You know, it's like I don't want whole division, you know. My my decision is uh, no change, and uh, I hope you're gonna understand me because if someone don't wanna fight, if someone finish, you have to leave him alone. What do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> in, in and then I then I like sorry, no. and then I say okay, I have call. He call and I say hey, this fight is, this fight is official. He talk about Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler, and he was waiting for my answer and. Uh, it was it was uh, f like a uh, very interesting and uh, like um, fun night for me it's like i come to meeting like and after meeting i feel like a little bit sad you know it's like and uh, because officially they uh, say uh, they, 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 they 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 make what can't uh, light lightweight title you know it's like even i'm retired like Inside my heart, like, I really love competition. Yeah. I really love this. I, I, I want to say one quick thing about this young man right here, right? For a long time when we were at it, you know, he was coming up as a young fighter and a guy that wanted to be the champion. That's all he wanted was to be the champion. So for Habib Nurmagomedov to walk away from this right now tells you how confident and comfortable he is in his decision. Because for years, it's all he wanted was to be the champion. I remember when he first came to AKA, he had his phone, right? Barely spoke English. And he would play me this audio of Bruce Buffer introduced him in his UFC <laughs> debut. And it would say, the Eagle of Dagestan, because that yeah. was his name before. It wasn't just the Eagle. It was the Eagle of Dagestan. And we would listen to it every day in the gym. And he would tell me, DC, one day I'm going to be undefeated, undisputed champion, and I'm going to make loads of money. And we would say, oh, you're out of your mind. 
Yeah. And he did all those things. So we're also proud of him. And for you to be walking away from this, Habib, I know how firm he must be in his decision. Because it's all he wanted to be was the champion. And it was so beautiful to see. I felt like the outpouring from just about everybody congratulating you on, on that retirement. But I wonder, as you sort of start to sit back, who do you think is the next best lightweight in the UFC? Uh, I think it's like uh, now people talk about Chandler, Oliveira, Dustin, Connor, Gaethje. Like my opinion, like end of the year, beginning of next year, it's going to be Islam Makhachev. Maybe people, maybe people think, oh, I'm just promoting. No, it's like I know how good this kid and uh, and everybody who ever compete with him, like inside the cage, like or on the mats, like wrestling, grappling, sparring. They know this, like, uh, like you can talk with a lot of UFC fighters, like who, uh, like, for example, Leon Edwards or Kamaru Usman. This is welterweight guys like DC, me, like a lot of guys who ever compete with these guys. They know if nothing happened, like Islam going to be uh, 2022, he's going to be best lightweight in the world. Wow. Yes. So now I know you're happy with retirement, but I have to ask, do you see yourself coaching your, your friends, your family? And potentially, like, just fall into that role of like being a head coach and uh, going with the guys to for fight to fight. No, I see is like um, not like coaching. We have head coach. This is Javier Mendez, and uh, I'm gonna be ass I'm, I'm gonna assist him. I'm gonna help him. I'm gonna help him with my guys. I'm gonna help him with his guys in AK. Like for everybody, you know, it's like. Uh, when I'm here, like for example, I'm here like one month, uh, like uh, I'm happy for my brothers, like everybody, we bring a lot of guys to train with them, like I, I, I love help because I have so much knowledge on this sport, you know, it's like, uh, and I want to share with these young lions, you know, I want to help them. Yeah, so you'll be in shape, which means you'll be close by. He trains yeah. full, he trains full time <laughs> still. No, honestly, I he love like training. You like me retired or are you like different type of retired? No, honestly, like DC, you retired a little bit different. You know, you, you, you play golf, you eat a lot of chickens, like, but uh, in one week, I spar two times. It is at least like minimum, I spar two so times. So have you still never lose round like Coach Jay? <laughs> you still never lose round ever? No, now I give some rounds for guys. Because I give them. Like, like sometimes like they, they need, uh, like, you know, it's like mental. Sometimes I give them, like, you know, you know my game. You know. <laughs> what a treat. Champ, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And Thank I appreciate you the, the five-star medallion. Uh, not you. as much as DC does, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, it's great to have you up here. And enjoy retirement. Maybe Thank you can you so take much. up golf with DC. He told me. He's <laughs> I asked good him. Yet. He was yeah. like, he's like, uh, I want to try this one. He just asked, but he never invited me. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Next time, I'm waiting. San Jose, we play. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll see. Well, I'm, sure, I'm sure you'd be great. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the stage right now. We have uh, eight fighters to go here for the weigh-ins for UFC 260. One of them, of course, Stipe Miocic. Let's take a look at the champ. My brother, please. I love shutting people up. I think before I even started fighting, and I just love shutting people up my whole life. You know, here we are now. The greatest heavyweight of all time is no modern day Goliath or picturesque Adonis. Just a hardworking firefighter from Ohio. Perhaps that is why Stipe Miocic is rarely the betting favorite when he competes. Don't do anything but distance first. Why don't you just move around with them like your boxer? First. You know, Stipe's been an underdog before when he shouldn't have been. We don't care, though, really. I don't give a It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> well, there you go. Nice double pivot. Keep that target moving. Your head's a target for him. Keep it moving. Very nice. But with Stipe, that eats at him. He's very competitive, and he knows where he belongs. Born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. The opportunity of a lifetime for the proud Croatian. Miocic now trying to counter with his own right hand. He has him rocked. This fight is over. There it is again. Yeah, nice tight right hand. There you go. Speed on the right hand. Point origin, right where it's from. Powerful athletic continues to grow. Always a step ahead of somebody, not a step behind. And his camp really believes he's going to surprise people. Oh, good right hand by Stipe. That's it. That's it. He's screaming at Dana White. Give me my shot. Yeah, Give me my shot. Hey, that's good. Now reset. Yeah. Nice job. 
I mean, if you look over his career, the amount of opponents that he beat at such a high level was amazing. I have never seen a champion this confident the week of a fight. Oh, and he got caught. That's it! Stipe Miocic is the new UFC heavyweight champion! On the world trip! Clean one, we got champion, baby! How do we finish? Get back on it, get back on it. The path to the UFC heavyweight title still goes through Cleveland, Ohio. He has so many skills that a lot of people haven't seen, and sometimes these, these unique fights bring them out. <laughs> hey, that's how you in. Nice job. And speaking of, Steve, hey, the champ is in the building. He has arrived at the apex from the hotel, so he did not uh, make his wait as, quite as long as we thought, but uh, pretty close. And he All right, is, next uh, fighter to the scale is the right man around listen. whom this fight card was built, the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Stipe Miocic. What's up, guys? Stipe Miocic here, heavyweight champ. It's going to be nice. This area, I get to punch someone in the face besides DC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, this is crazy. Low blow. I enjoyed punching him, too. You know, it was fun, but it hurt a lot. <laughs> I'm interested to see what Stipe weighs. Super light last time we fought. Fast, lean. 234, so still the small, official weight for the but um, smaller Stipe than the first Miocic. fight, but a little bit heavier. I think it was like 230 when we fought last time. Look, man, the guy's not trying to lose weight, and Stipe is an absolute dog, like a dog. And he is not over here to lose his title to Francis Ngannou. He, he has, takes a lot of pride in being the heavyweight champion in the world. Uh, tremendous punching power, tremendous skills across the board. And I'm interested to see how this one plays out. This is going to be a fantastic fight. And I cannot wait to watch two of the most scary heavyweights in the world. It was crazy because Stipe lost all that weight, but he still hit just as hard. It wasn't like he hit any less hard at 230 opposed to 246, 247 pounds. His punches still had the same pop, even though he had lost a lot of weight. Did you feel like he was able to move a little bit faster? Did he feel any different in those, in those clinch situations? In the third fight, he felt different in the sense that they had produced a great game plan. Some things changed from fight two to fight three. Whereas I was able to walk him down before, he created much better angles. He landed and got in and out when he needed to. He was able to clinch. The guy is a smart fighter as much as he is a physical and dominating fighter. Yes, I agree. And I think that's the, the thing about Stipe Miocic is his fight IQ. I think it's super high level. And I think that's what sets him apart from a lot of these other heavyweights. And I think uh, that's going to play a big factor in, in tomorrow night's fight as well. All right. So in the second fight, uh, he weighed 230 against yep. you. In the third fight, he weighed 234. And now he weighs in at 234. Oh, 234 the last time? Yeah. In the third fight. I didn't even realize that. Fight. I thought he was smaller. Yeah. Two, two, yeah, 242 and a half. He I'm kept sorry. coming down he kept yeah, coming between down. the fights. Yeah. And look, I mean, yeah. he won the last two fights, so it was great. Yeah. Francis Ngannou is in the building as well, so we are uh, waiting for both fighters from our uh, main event to weigh in. And uh, <laughs> just a matter of uh, moments. All right, let's take a look at uh, some of the weigh-ins so far on the prelim card. And um, man, there's some good ones here. I, I love the uh, I love the fight of the night conversation. Some of the uh, some of the choices that we made there because I, I feel like he could go any number of directions. And I, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, Fabio Chiron, who has yet to weigh in, who's a late addition uh, to this card. And here is a look at the uh, weigh-in results from the main card as well. And one of the picks that uh, Aljo you had for fight of the night is Jamie Malarkey, even though he he doesn't had enough success to translate into wins, he is a, he's a banger. Yeah, that fight with Brad Riddell that we talked about is yeah. just super exciting from beginning to end, and it had you on the edge of your seats, and that's what you need for a fight of the night. You need two that are willing to tango. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look at the numbers on Steve. I mean, listen, he he's the greatest heavyweight in MMA history right now, and he just keeps racking up numbers. He tied Randy Couture with his uh, sixth heavyweight title fight, the most in UFC history, and 
There's a huge article recently calling him the Rodney Dangerfield of uh, the UFC right now because he doesn't get enough respect. By the way, he's, he's an underdog in this one as well. I was trying to make the connection between Stevie Miocic and Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield as you were talking Well, you're there, too young to remember Rodney Dangerfield. No, I know who he is, okay. but, but listen, let's, we have to take a look at this artistry here. And Alger, I think you nailed it on the head earlier. It is the fight IQ from Stipe Miocic that is so intriguing to see in these matchup situations, but you can't look past this violence. I mean, the boxing of Stipe, the way that he's able to cut angles, cut off the cage. I'm fascinated to see these two big guys go to war in this small cage inside the UFC apex where it's two steps forward and that's about all the space he's got, DC. Yeah, there's no space in there for big guys. It's like you go forward a couple steps, as you said, and then you've got your opponent against the side of the cage. It's, it's an intense environment because it's so small. It's even more and multiplied because of how big they are. But if you know Stipe, and I think in the build to the last fight, Stipe got a game plan that was good for that octagon. So I think that he has planned for that in regards to the fight with me. He's planned for that in regards to the fight with Francis. He will not approach this fight with Francis as he's fighting in a bigger octagon. You'll see him create more angles, try to set traps for Francis to reel him in to his power shots. But Aljo, I know that you guys at Extreme Couture have a very similar size cage. So Francis has been getting round after round after round in a 24, 25 foot cage. So it's gonna feel like familiar territory for him, at least in that regard. Yeah, for sure, 100%. And I think that's the main thing, having that those experiences are very similar so you can kind of get comfortable and, and knowing what it's gonna feel like when you step in there. So you just have this little bit more of a, Familiar, I can't even say the word. Familiarity. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a tongue twister to me. Not gonna lie, tongue twister, but yes, but to have that, you get those looks and those reps time and time again so you can help make those adjustments when you're stepping into the octagon for the, for the real time. And here is Francis Ngannou coming to the scale right now. Let's listen. Chiseled. Wow. Which is the exact same amount that he weighed last time. Wow. Wow. But he looks different, though. He looked puffy yeah. in the first, right? In the Your first UFC fight, he almost looked puffy, like too big. He looks cut weight to get there. He looks lean at 263 here. Well, I mean, I don't know the weights of some of Francis's prior fights, but for a while, wasn't he weighing in around 250, 250, 253 pounds? He did. I talked to Eric about that the other day. I can't remember which fight it was, but he did. And, I, and I, Eric said that, you know, some trips home and they were happy with him uh, having a little bit more weight in this fight. And they feel very confident in the conditioning work that they've been putting in at Extreme okay. Couture okay. Uh, leading up to this. He's been doing some wrestling. So at JDS, right? JDS fight, yeah. he was yeah. 255 pounds. Yep. So he was getting smaller. And I thought that was to combat Stipe's ability to push him so hard. But I guess he feels good in the 260s. He the looks good. Biscuit. Yeah, he looks strong. Big biscuit. Big, biscuit. <laughs> Big old three piece and a biscuit. <laughs> so, full on meal. The free. main event is official 263 for Francis Ngannou. You, you talk about his last four fights being under five minutes. 242 combined. That's it. That's so the half time of what his I last said. Four yep. fights. He knocked out every opponent in 71 seconds or less. Wow. I mean, that's, that's crazy. And think about it. I mean, you're cashing checks, big checks. For a minute of work every time you go out there, but ultimately you cash all those nice checks. But now it's time for the biggest check because with that belt comes more financial security than you've ever imagined. Can he go out and put in 25 minutes if he needs to, if Stipe can stand up to that initial burst? And he doesn't have, you know, as you said, the octagon time wrapped up, but. When you Again, when you think about how he was coming into that first fight with Stipe, just four years in combat sports, 
period. No wrestling background, no Olympic background like you had, DC. Four years in combat sports, period. Now we are a little over three years later, so he has nearly doubled his overall experience. And I got to believe, I know we're not seeing it in the octagon, but you know he's putting the time in in the gym. And so when you talk about doubling up his experience, we might see a very, very different guy out there. Well, he says he thinks he's twice the fighter that he was the last time around. And if you remember, he didn't have a long time to prepare for that fight. Mm -hmm. He flew to France and then flew back. And it was just, he, he feels like he's much more, everything's stabilized and normalized now. Here's Vicente Luque step into the scale. I'm the silent assassin. What do you want me to say? Very short, very short words there. Silent assassin, what do you want me to say? 170 and one half pounds, the official weight for Vicente Luque. All right. Luque is in the books, and we have another surprise guest, Misha Tate, in the house. Thank you for joining. I mean, this is just a parade of stars coming through here. Yeah, I was watching when I was getting my makeup done. You guys had the whole, I saw Khabib on here, yeah. and everybody, yes. Yeah, so... so this is a pretty huge story, you coming back out of retirement. I, I mean, guess it's been, so. what, four plus years <laughs> since the last time? I'm excited everybody else is ex as excited as I am. What, what prompted that decision? Um, I just felt it in my heart. I've always been one of those people that have flown by the seat of my pants, and just when, when it speaks to me, I just know. You know, it's like when you know, you know. Like people say that when they fall in love, when you know, you know. It's like it's the same thing for the sport. It's like I'm, I'm in love again. So was it something that you just said, listen, this is what I want to do. My heart's telling me to do this. Or did Dana give you a call and say, hey, we could no. use you? Dana has been entirely respectful, like the entire time. Like he never bothered me. He never called me. It was like me calling. Actually, I had to hunt him down. I was like, Dana, if you don't answer my calls, like I'm going to come to the PI. I was like, I know where you are. I was like, I will find you. Because I think he just, he wanted to make sure that it was like, not because it had to, you know what I mean? Like right. financially, he was like, are you okay? Like financially, I was like, no, I'm great. I'm good in like, great financial standing. I'm doing this because I want to. I can't, I, I'll be honest with you right now. I saw him talk about your nose in a recent interview and the fact that you got it fixed. And I'm looking at it and it looks perfect. And he's like, I Thanks. told her she shouldn't get it fixed yet. It's she should perfect. wait. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. But that's okay. It's like, <laughs> it's not perfect. I still don't breathe out of it very well. But hey, you know, it's the life of a fighter. So. It looks perfect from here. You, you, you <laughs> it look looks fantastic. Great. It looks fantastic. Um, now, it's, it was really cool to see not just you coming out of retirement, but already having a fight booked. Marion Renault, mm -hmm. July 17. Why was this exact opponent uh, the right one? And why was this fight time the exact right time? I mean, the opponent, I don't know. I don't know why, you know, if Marion Renault is the right one or whatnot, but that's the one that was put in front of me, and that's the one that I will focus on. Um, I kind of had, a, I, was, I actually was hoping to fight Yana. I was kind of looking for Yana, but I think she already has something in the works or whatever. But look, Marion Renault is a, she's a spoiler, and she's somebody that you really have to take serious. I mean, her submission over Sarah McMahon was something that was like, wow, really impressed me. She's fought a lot of the best women in the world. She's been around for quite some time, and I think... Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, DC. Like, the, one of the most important things, like, you have to keep in mind when somebody has this is the retirement fight for her. That's, right? that's the beauty of it. She has nothing left, like, to give. So she's going to put everything. There's no next fight. Like, she's no. going to put everything she has into this, right? Well, she's going into her last fight, and you're coming back. So, right, it sets the perfect stage for mm -hmm. what this fight is going to be. I mean, I can't wait to watch. I'm excited that you're back, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, we were talking about this recently and talking about the athletes from Strike Force that are still competing at a high level. And it seemed as though the only one left is Derek Brunson. But Misha, you're <laughs> back now and going to have our Strike Force banner flying for a little while longer, right? Exactly. <laughs> yes, I got some life left in me, some gas left in the gas tank. And I'm, I'm just in a really good place. You know, that's, that's what's the main difference between the Misha Tate that left and the Misha Tate that's coming back. It's like I'm just in such a beautiful place in my life. Yeah. And I'm, I'm full, like I'm ready to go. You know, Misha, you watch your social media and everything. You're over in um, Asia, right? You're over in Asia, Singapore, or yeah. Singapore right? Mm -hmm. Everything seems so perfect. You had a family. Mm -hmm. You had a big-time job. Everything seemed to be going the right way for a retired person or yeah. in a woman that it, has so, many, so much desire to be and do mm -hmm. big things. But why now? 
everything was perfect. It is perfect. So like why this, now? Why wh now to come um, back and fight? You know what? I think the sport's been calling for me for quite some time, to be honest. And I just think it's time I answer. Like, my heart has been telling me. It was like since I, when I had my son nine months ago. I was like, that was the moment I was kind of like, you know, the pandemic hit. So many things kind of hit close to home. What's important in life? Time is important. Family is important. These things are important. Goals and dreams are important. And a lot of people kind of had that shut down, right? And so we, it was the fourth slowdown, and it really made me reevaluate. Like, what do I really want in life? Yeah. I want family, and I want, to, I want greatness. I want to be great again. Now, is that a big part of your inspiration to want to fight again, having your child? I mean, it, it is, but it, it's not my driving factor. You know, I, I'm still a competitor at heart. You know, I still, I love to get in there and train. You know, Aljo, you see me in there. Like, you yes. ran some practices. Like, you know, I'm, I've still got a lot to, to give. And, and sure, like, I want my daughter to see, like, her strong mommy. I want to know everything that she's capable of. My son as well. But, um, you know, I'd be lying if I wasn't saying, like, I'm really doing this for myself. I'm doing this because I really want to. And I want to be the baddest woman on the planet again. Now, a lot of people talk about making a comeback, but, you know, it takes a while for them to have a fight booked, but you had mm -hmm. yours booked pretty much right away. So, I mean, I've seen you training, but mm -hmm. how long have you been training, like, prior to that? Like, did you know already, like, this is what I'm going to do and kind of had an idea, like, yeah, yeah I'm going to get back in the game? So it's not like I ever really stopped training, you know, um, besides obviously the highest you have to take a little bit with pregnancy. But even then, you know, I'm hitting mitts, I'm watching the sport. But what I can say the benefit of that was that I was actually able to sit back and really... Um, look at the sport and dissect it from like a, you know, from the outside perspective, right? So you learn a lot when you just get to sit back and you don't have to focus on, you know, training tomorrow, how to do this, how to do that. Like, I just got to observe and I found I learned a lot. I like, I got to coach. And I mean, these, you guys probably know as you sit and you watch fights, like you, you learn as you watch, right? You learn as you break down the more that you get to sit on the outside. And so that's kind of what I've been what I've been doing. And that's probably why you see so many athletes improve as they do this type of stuff, yes, right? The analyst yes. work, right? And that's what I've been doing. I've done a lot of analyst work. I've done, um, you know, I've coached and uh, I just feel very clear and I feel mature. I feel like I'm in a different point in my life where, you know, I'm not, uh, I've got this balance. I've got this center that I didn't have before. And before it was very chaotic. You know, I was, towards the end of my career, I was really struggling with depression, to be honest. I had a lot going on in my personal life. And, um, you know, even prior to the Holly fight, you know, almost at that one slipped through my fingers. I just had too much going on and I didn't know how to balance it all. And I think with time away and maturity and all the things that I've simplified my life down to, like what's really important, boiling it down to basics, um, I just have a much better outlook and I'm, I'm definitely gonna come back in with, you know, a lot of fire, a lot of passion and wholeheartedly because I want to. Excited. With that <laughs> expanded sort of balanced outlook and motherhood looks beautiful on you, by Thank the way. You. Um, what what are the goals that you have in in returning? Are you are you looking to chase down titles, or is this more about you and your timing? And and you'll fight when you feel like fighting. Okay, so I so I want to stay busy, right? Because I had a lot of um, I had a lot of time away from uh, the sport. So now I think I need to make the most time is of the essence, and I think uh, I want to stay busy. You know, like I, I want to get this fight over in July, and I'd like to fight three times in the year. And you know, I'm on kind of a two year plan. I want to see what I can do in two years. It's that's about as far in the future as I can look, and we'll see what happens after that two years. But staying busy, yes. You're one of the pioneers in uh, women's MMA. The evolution to watch that of, of the division with Wei Li and Amanda mm -hmm. and Valentina and how that's gone. That's so What's that incredible. been like for you? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, these women are just fantastic. They're truly ambassadors of the sport as well. And they, they have um, done a wonderful job carrying the torch and putting on amazing fights. And that fight between Wei Li and uh, Zhang, uh, there was, I mean, Wei Li and uh, Yuana, excuse me, was incredible. Um, you know, one of the best women's fights we've ever seen. So, I mean, they've done a fantastic job, but I'm just excited to come back and add some spice in the division. That's how I see myself coming in, you know? I'm just adding a little, I'm adding a little bit of flavor, a little bit of spice, yeah. What, what, in there. what, you were, you were the it person. You were the star when you left. You've, you've watched Amanda rise to mm -hmm. that, you know, goat status. Mm -hmm. um, what are you gonna inject back in? to women's MMA now. And what's it been like to watch Amanda? Amanda's great. And I will say, you know, when I fought her, she wasn't the Amanda that we knew. You know, I didn't really know. I mean, I saw her fight against Katzengano, and, you know, you go back and you look at those things. And then she, since that point, I mean, she's really, her trajectory has been insane. So 
I look at that and I'm like, wow, you know, I didn't know at the time, but now I know. You know, I've been able to sit back and I've been able to watch her and I've been able to see the greatness she's accomplished as well as, you know, many of the other women. But I'd be lying if my goal wasn't, you know, eventually long-term goal. I know it's a tall order, but I want to get back there and I, I would like that rematch. You know, if my girl Juliana doesn't get it done first, you know, because I know she should be next in line and I think she will probably, she has a great chance of getting it done. It's, it's that style of fighting, right? The, the, the grind. Omar so. Um, that's what I think. Well, that, that is a rematch mm -hmm. that I think we would all love to see. Omar Morales uh, coming in at 146 as he steps off the scale. Um, all right, let's talk about what we have coming up tomorrow. And these guys behind us, the uh, the baddest man on the oh, planet, yeah. and uh, Stipe and Francis <laughs> Ngannou. How do you see that one going down? All right, so look, I I just love Francis Ngannou. I think he's fantastic, and I think he's improved tremendously. And I know there's a lot of questions because, well, look at his last few fights. We haven't seen very much except what he always does, right? He goes out there and knocks people out quickly. It's maybe not the case against Stipe, but the areas I can tell you he's improved tremendously, conditioning. That's not going to be as much of an issue as it was the first fight. His wrestling has gotten a lot better. And when you're fighting somebody like Stipe, right, fight IQ is really important as well. So choosing when he fights in spurts. Um, obviously, I think you see where I'm leaning with this. I'm going Team, Fra team Francis. I think that he can get it done. Um, I think some failed shots. Wrestling is one of the most exhausting things to do. You get a big man like uh, Francis in there who can weigh on you, who can pull you down, who can make you tired. Um, and then he's got those those hands of hell. I mean, they just fists of fury. It, it only takes one. 25 minutes is a long time to not let one of those land when you have a much improved athlete. He's got a serious training camp behind him. He's got good coaches. He's got the conditioning. He's taking use of the Performance Institute. I mean, everything is dialed in, and it just wasn't the case the first time. It wasn't the case. He was kind of just thrown in preemptively. So, um, I love Stipe as well. He's a great guy and is the you know, greatest heavyweight of all time. So it's, you know, again, it's a tall order for Francis. But I think Francis has the tools to get it done this time. I think it's a great point about how settled everything is before yes. this fight as opposed to the last fight. That was Kama Worthy uh, who just weighed in at 155 mm -hmm. and a half. Misha, we are so pumped that you're back. Uh, I, it's cool that you're, you're just a different person now. You have a family. You have a lot going on. But I, I can't am. tell you how cool it's going to be to see you get back in there. Cool. Um, I know all UFC fans are looking forward to that. And thanks for stopping by the desk. It was wonderful. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Uh, let's send it to our Beyond the Line crew for a little, uh, little gambling perspective on what we're going to see coming up tomorrow in UFC 260. Thanks, guys. UFC On The Line crew here ready for UFC 260 coming up. And, of course, that main event between Francis Ngannou and Stipe Miocic. The rematch, Ngannou favored again. Yanni, your thoughts? He's just not favored high enough. And how do I know that? Because they fought two years ago, and we, the betting market, sharps, squares, all the information was factored into that price and it closed at minus 200. This time around, minus 120, why? Because Francis lost, we're not supposed to put stock into any one outcome. There's a lot of randomness involved. Plus, Stipe fought his career highs in that one, coupled with career lows on the other side. He's gotta fight the perfect fight two times in a row. I like Francis, if he shored up that cardio, the price is right. Yeah, that's right. I completely agree. I think the price should be a lot higher than what we're looking at right now. I opened at minus 180. It was as high as minus 225 at one point. Now it's down to where it's a pick em type of spot. So I think a lot of people were putting stock into the last fight. A lot of people believe that Stipe is just a bad matchup for Ngano. So you got to take advantage when that's the case and bet the other side. Uh, if this fight goes a little bit deeper, Nick, that's where the questions arise, though, because Stipe dragged it into the fifth round and it didn't go well for Francis Ngano. If this fight goes a little bit longer, what are you thinking? I will start freaking out if it does go into like third, fourth, Fourth round for sure because I think the shift goes towards Stipe and if that's the case I think Stipe can win on the scorecards again if it goes to the scorecards but I don't necessarily think that is going to be the case I think there's just too much firepower I think the improvements and the tweaks that Ngano is going to make is going to be there but I would freak out for sure and it might be a live betting opportunity de depending on the line at that right. time as well uh, and Ngano's longest fight in his last four is one minute 11 seconds you believe in the cardio though I do, and I'm not concerned. Listen, I'm not betting Francis Ngannou because I expect him to come in looking like Henry Cejudo, looking like an Olympic wrestler. If that's why you're going to bet him, don't do it. I'm betting him because if his cardio is on point, he will be dangerous as long as this fight goes. That's what was missing the first time around. After the first five minutes, he no longer posed a threat. As long as he can pose a threat, as long as it goes, 
I'm comfortable with my bet. I'm pot committed. So I'm going to sit back and watch how it unfolds. All right, Stipe Miacic is 4-0 in his last four as an underdog. He's kept that strap despite being the underdog several times. Let's go to the co-main event, Tyron Woodley. He's the biggest underdog in his career when he takes on Vicente Luque. Luque wants that spotlight, Nick. Big spot for him on Saturday night. Yeah, it's a great spot to come in and get a win over a former champ like Woodley for sure. I'm not so sure, though. The narrative seems to be that Woodley's shot, he's done. Look, at the competition level he's faced, he's lost to three of the best welterweights in the world, for crying out loud. He might have a little left to pull off the upset here. I think it's a dog or pass situation. I'm going to go the opposite as far as the public goes because it seems to be a trendy thing with Luke getting this guaranteed win. I don't think that's the case. Luke has won eight of his last nine fights. That's why he's got this big favorite number. Yeah, and the only fight he lost in that was against Wonderboy, and that was a coin flip. Listen, the bottom line is this. Sure, it's chalky, but there's a reason for that. We're seeing that the market is efficient on the Woodley side. He's lost his last three fights, but he was favored in the first two of those. He became an underdog in the third one. He's an underdog again. That's where he should be, because the last two years, what we've seen should put him in that spot where he's the underdog. That's the bottom line. He's given us 75 minutes and only 96 significant strikes landed against an opponent like Luque who lands over five significant strikes per minute. That's just not a recipe to win. But at minus 265 on the Luque side, too much or are you laying that price? Yeah, I'm not going to urge anyone to run out there and unload because you have to conclude he wins this fight 75 percent plus to have a margin to make it worth betting to have any return on investment and I'm not going to go that far I think there's better plus EV spots on this card that's exactly why I think it is a dog or pass situation I mean you said yourself this is one of the biggest underdog spots that Willie's been in his career against Luke I'm not so sure that's accurate so dog or pass situation I'm not telling you to go out there and lay a bunch of money at Woodley we'll see how it plays out but I'm just telling you to be cautious on the Luke side because I don't think you can lay that kind of chalk as Johnny said all right Sean O'Malley's getting big chalk once again he's always been a big favorite since coming into the UFC. He's minus 335 as he takes on Thomas Almeida. Nick, I'll start with you on this bantamweight matchup as well. As crazy as it sounds, the price is probably a little short here. You know, O'Malley is a great striker. It's a striker versus striker matchup here. I understand it's big chalk, but there are other ways to bet this fight if you're going to bet it. Look at props, look at parlays. I mean, this is going to be a fantastic fight. There's going to be fireworks back and forth and somebody's getting finished, and I think it's going to be O'Malley coming out on top here. I can't disagree. Of late, Almeida's lost four of his last five. I think the only win was as a minus three plus 50 favorite. There's plus, you look at the analytics on the O'Malley, the, the striking, what the accuracy, there's just so much to like there. And again, I don't even think the price is all that high, but you have to bet him early because he's been favored all his fights, but the average lay price is minus 230 opener. It closes a lot higher. So if you miss O'Malley early, you probably got to sit it out. I missed them, so I have to sit it out. All right, we uh, just discussed a few of the main card bets. We're going to open it up to the whole main card and get your best bet. And Kama Worthy is taking on Jamie Malarkey. That one has your eye, Yanni. Yeah, and I always say, I look for coin flips that are giving me plus money, and I think in this spot, my guy should even be favored. Not only is he eight years younger, where that's about a 65% win rate, but the data tells me there's an easy path to victory. He averages four takedowns per 15 minutes. Worthy 57% takedown defense. Take him down, control him, avoid the big shot, and I think my guy could win this at plus money. I'll tell it. I completely agree. I think that's a great plus money spot with Malarkey as well. I also lean towards Ngano in the main event. I mean, it's not very often you're going to get the guys to pick them type of price. So I think you have to take advantage. I mean, this line, if he wins this fight, it's going to skyrocket from here on out as well. So I think pick them is the way to go with Ngano. All right. Consensus agreement on Francis Ngano in the main event from both of these sharps. Very interesting to see what plays out. Guys, back to you. All right, Brendan, thank you, fellas. Tyron Woodley uh, coming up for his weigh-in as we speak. The former welterweight champ from 16 to 19. Of course, uh, taking on uh, Vicente Luque, as you can see. Sean O'Malley joining us uh, live on set as we uh, get set to watch Tyron uh, step on the scale here. Let's listen in for a moment. One hundred and seventy-one pounds, the official weight for T. Wood. T. Wood looks sucked down, but that's always the case with him. He always has tough weight cuts, but he fills out great whenever the, the fight night comes. 
All right, so he has weighed in as as the Sugar Show, Sean O'Malley. How you feeling, man? <clears throat> feel good. You know, weigh-ins are always tough, but I feel good. This is a uh, this is a different deal for you. You have not experienced this in in your pro career. Is there is there extra motivation after the way this last fight ended? I feel, um, you know, I feel just as it feels just like another fight. You know, the one thing I've always uh, appreciated about you is that you get. The, the entertainment factor of this. You get you have a podcast, you're active on Instagram, you have a ton of followers. I've always wondered if there's somebody that you kind of model your persona after, or somebody that you saw growing up, you said, I, I want to do it like they did it. Uh, kind of Connor, you know, he, he kind of, I had that idea <clears throat> before Connor kind of blew up, but watching Connor kind of learn some, learn some things. And, uh, so, so probably Connor, but you know, I also try to just be myself. Looking back at, uh, you know, the Contender Series, you were by far the biggest name to sort of come out of that show, and so much has changed. You've got a lot more ink, uh, you got a little bit more colorful hair going this time, a much bigger frame, uh, and you now have a daughter. Now, I, everybody's been asking you the question, does it change your motivation? And I know you've already answered that, but my, my question for you is, uh, as someone who has openly talked about how they love kids, have always wanted kids, what's your favorite part of being a parent now? <laughs> probably watching her suck on her big toe like it's her thumb. <laughs> probably, probably, but that gets me every time. Um, or when I'm holding her up, dodging the puke when it's coming up. So um, Work on that head movement. Yep. In the mornings, every morning you start off with with a big smile. It's the mornings, the nights, it, all day. It, it's good. I enjoy it a lot. When you look back at the Sean O'Malley uh, from the Contender Series and, and what you've been able to accomplish in a very short period of time, I mean, do you ever... Do you feel like you're the same guy? I mean, do you, do you ever do you ever get sick of hearing Snoop Dogg scream, "Oh, Malley! Oh, Malley!" <laughs> I don't a, get sick of it. No, Snoop's <laughs> a legend amongst legends, so no, not at all. It's it, it, the way my career's played out up until this point is is has been amazing, and and it, I'm I'm just going with the flow. Now every fight's a big opportunity. Now this one, obviously, a guy like Thomas Almeida is a guy who's been in that spotlight before, um, and obviously you're in the spotlight as well, so. Uh, what, what do you think a win over Thomas Almeida does for your career? It depends how I win. Um, I go out there and win a, a decision. Doesn't doesn't say much. I go out there and put his lights out the way I put out Eddie's lights. Um, you know, I make a big statement. I'm, I'm up in that in that that talk. Right now, I'm not in the mix. You know, the bantamweight division's on fire, but I'm not really in that mix. I go out there and put Thomas's lights out. Uh, I'm in that mix. You know, all week a lot has been made of you saying that you're still undefeated and. We're all up here guessing as to what the mentality is in that statement because you lost the last fight. So tell us what goes into that thought process. You know, I understand that it was, I understand that it was a, a freak thing that happened, but ultimately, you know, you didn't win the fight. So, like, what do you, what do you, what goes into that thought process? Yeah. Um, like, yeah, like you said, it was a freak thing. How many times has it happened since, since that? Mm -hmm. How many leg kicks have been landed since? That, that fight, yeah. And how many times has it caused someone to have dropped? How many times it hit hit that nerve? It wasn't a calf kick that put me down. His toe hit my nerve. Um, how many times has it happened in the last ten years? I know it happened to Jamie Varner, um, uh, Chandler, so Michael Chandler, Cejudo. and Cejudo a little bit. Um, so, if that's not a freak accident, how many thousands of leg kicks have been landed? I don't know mm -hmm. what is. I you watched that fight. I was. I was piecing you were winning him up. the fight. I was, I was piecing him up. So, so but Sean, did he got, he got lucky. I talked to the Sugar State Athletic Commission, and they mm -hmm. took it away. It's not even. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I, I like that, Sean. Okay, now I understand. My favorite athletic commission. Okay, so let me ask you this one. I remember the fight that you won. I called it. I can't remember the guy you beat, but you hurt your leg. I broke my foot. You broke your foot, right? Yeah. And then this. So is there is there is there an issue? With some of the, with the leg, I mean, what, what's going on down there? Yeah, I, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I know Tom, you know, Tom's probably going to come, come out and try to kick my leg. So it, it'll, it'll be good for, uh, good for the fans to, to see. We'll see. Um, and when I broke my foot against uh, Andre. Andre. It was uh, Andre soccer mom. Yes. Yeah, I threw a head kick and I <laughs> landed. And when I, when I pushed off to throw a right hand, my, my foot snapped. And I'd, uh, I tore the Liz Frank or whatever, you know, pretty major surgery. Um, and that, that took like two years to actually heal. So 
Um, that was also kind of a freak accident. So maybe, you know, if I get kicked with another nerve kick, I might just be done. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. If I get kicked again, this fight, and my nerve, and I go out. If I get kicked, it's different if it's a calf kick or, or whatever. But if I get kicked in that nerve again, then it maybe, maybe it's not a freak accident. If Cheeto would have said, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to put my toe on his nerve, and I'm going to cause him drop foot. <laughs> And that's how he won that fight. Or this this whole thing wouldn't be being, wouldn't be I wouldn't be mentally undefeated. If he would have called that shot, it's different. If I throw a spinning back kick to someone's head and land it, that's that's you know that's fair and square. But but a toe to the nerve, unless it happens again, we'll see. So tell me about training for this one. You, you bought a new place in Arizona. You got a big old garage there. I know the last year a lot of guys. Uh, have had to train at home as much as the gym. Are you splitting time between, you kind of built that up into a little mini gym for you, right? Yeah, it, it, with COVID, it's stressful, especially with po fights pulling out right now, this close to the, uh, even fights like the day of pulling out. So yeah, um, I, I was still training, sparring at the lab, you know, going to a couple of different gyms, but you know, just having my own ho uh, cage in my house has, has been nice for, for mid sessions, having some people come up and stuff like that. And is that something you'll you'll keep doing? You think from from here on out? Yeah, that cage is a son of a gun to put up, take down. So that thing ain't going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> any any message for uh, for Thomas Almeida before we let you go? S sorry, brother. Sorry, he's going to Bellator prior to this. I, no. If he loses this fight, he's, he's in the, we'll see. So, right. Sorry. All right. It's Sugar Show, Sean O'Malley. Thanks, man. Yep. I appreciate it. I, I've I've watched you come up from the Contender Series and. I was in there with Snoop right after you guys had your fun, and uh, I've, been, I've been enjoying the ride, man. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. The, uh, the big one, the main event, the baddest man on the planet, Francis Ngannou, Stipe Miacic. Take a look at this. There are so many questions about this guy. We don't know how he fights off his back. We don't know how he deals with adversity. We've had every question answered about Stipe Miocic, except one. Can he turn back? the hurricane of Francis Ngannou, and we're about to find out. I was just going there to smash him like he was nobody. Ngannou looking for big bombs. Goodness. Oh! Big right hand over the top for Ngannou. And I never approached a fight like that. Oh, he got tagged. Oh, oh! Big shot by Stipe over the top. It was a different me fighting that fight. Oh, good right hand by Stipe. Oh! Right over the top of the jab. Beautiful Ngannou. right hand by the champion. Beautiful time takedown. And this is where we see what Ngannou is made of. Patient! Be patient! patient. Wear him down! This is where Stipe is looking to dominate the entire fight from this position right here. Hammer fist by the champ. Ngannou looks lost. He does not seem to know what to do here. Ngannou visibly fatigued as he gets back to his feet. Oh! Nice one, two. Oh, oh, he's hurt! Oh. He's hurt! Goodness gracious. Stipe shoots again. Oh! Wow! What an awesome first round. And look at Francis Ngannou labor back to his feet. Francis looks exhausted. He looks bewildered. The weight in his body that he's feeling right now is incredible. That's the first round. We call that adrenaline dump. I want you to stay outside of his punches, not inside. When he comes hard, change your level, take him down again. Ready to go here for round two. Oh, we! All the momentum is on the champion side right now. Good shot by Miacic, and he gets Ngannou down again. He's just wearing Ngannou out. Or Francis, he catches you clean on that chin, you're out. Ngannou is still dangerous. Uh oh, oh shoot. big right for Ngannou. You know, if you be smart and keep your head down and keep your hands up, you're, you're gonna go a long way. Ngannou's just eating punches here. He's in big trouble. He's tired of being tired. He's very dangerous, and but so am I. And I'm gonna go out there swinging. And Stipe's just dropping bombs on him here. Yes, keep it going. Yes, sir, good job. It has been all Stipe Miocic here tonight. Francis Ngannou has had no answers. You couldn't have mapped out a better way to fight Francis Ngannou than the way Stipe's doing it right now. I just weathered the storm and found my openings and, you know, won the fight. They are standing and cheering in Boston. Yeah. Stipe Miocic has survived and conquered Francis Ngannou tonight. Showed me that like, I, I know I belong here. You made history tonight, Stipe. You became the first man to defend the heavyweight title three times in the history of the sport. Congratulations for cementing your position as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world in a very, very tough fight. 
I know I can keep it a title for a long time. They're all still chasing the most decorated heavyweight champion of all time, Stipe Miocic. Look at this. All right, it is time for get, study up. I gotta take this off. Let me Why? take this off. I, I can, I, my neck's getting heavy. I okay. need all my brain Wait, power. It's gonna so look better when you lose. Right this, is, here. this is where we get to find out how much our guys actually studied for this card. We just had Sean O'Malley on set. Oh, it's over. He was peeking at my computer where I had the questions I was gonna ask him. I was like, you're cheating, dude. He goes, no, you can't put no, it down. You can't I'm put just it getting like ready that. like I did in high school. So, so we're gonna move, find out one which one of these guys is really down. ready in study up. You can't like hide your What are you answer? talking hey, about over there? Hey, you have a No, he's trying to cheat. No, he's like trying to hide his answers. Tell him one of the rules is that you have to write it on the desk. No, that's one of the rules. That you have to, <laughs> no, so it's not a rule. Hey, no, he will no, cheat no, it's not a rule. One of the rules, no, you have to write it on the desk. I'm serious. Right. I am I'll write mine right there. I can't already. Champs, champs, are you guys ready over there? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. All right, question number one in study up. We know Stipe has the most UFC heavyweight title victories. Uh, he is tied with another octagon legend. Who is it? Got it. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, we are... Uh, Three, two, one. All right, turn it around. It's not going well. Randy Couture, Couture, and a smiley face from Senko. <laughs> this is unheard Oh, of. my goodness, Randy. Wow. Let's go. Let's go, Randy. Uh, Let's go, baby. I'm trying to get a dub today. behind very often. I'm trying to get a dub uh, today. Is losing. Oh, yeah, I know. It's not good. It's not voting well. To Sterling and Cormier. All right. Uh, who has the most knockouts in UFC heavyweight history? Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the answer in the wall. Most knockouts oh, in yeah. heavyweight history. Derek Lewis with 12 turnaround. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Gano. No, no I got Lewis. I got no. Lewis. I got Lewis. You can't say two people wish wash, wish wash. No, I thought it was a tie right between Kane. Velasquez, nope. Velasquez has 12 2. Mm -mm, he just beat no. him. No. No, Velasquez not has knockouts. knockouts. Vela Dude, I, this needs to be checked. <laughs> Velasquez <laughs> had the knockout record. Derek Lewis just che che tied him. No, 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 I just no, no, listened no, no, to no, his no. podcast. How did I get Francis that wrong? and Stipe, by the way, tied for fourth with nine. Okay, question number three. Francis and Ganu's average fight time is the shortest among active UFC heavyweights. What is it? Can we get the closest to the number? Yeah, no, no, no price is right rules. Uh, closest to the number. You can be over on just closest to the number. Wait. Minutes and seconds. Average fight time? Average fight, fight time for all of his fights in the UFC. Not just the last four mm. that we talked about, because mm. that was really short. Okay. All right, Laura, you reveal first. Four minutes and 12 seconds, average fight time. Aljo, seven minutes and 30 seconds. So we have two and a half rounds there. And right at around five minutes uh, for DC. And I believe. Oh, it's DC, baby! DC, DC baby! Wins. <laughs> Let's go! Five it's DC, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! All right, I hope we're keeping score. Let's get a tally. <laughs> I need a lifeline right now. It's two right for DC. Let's go! We're going to question right, we're done. number we're done. four. All right, Tyron Woodley's takedown defense is fourth highest in the UFC welterweight history. Is his percentage above or below 85%? Are you guys ready? I feel like this is... I'll tell you good? Yep. Yeah. All right. Above or below 85%? Above 87.5%. I said below. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, We're even so Laura, whatever. We're just even, <laughs> We're just even Laura. Just for that, but, you know, All right. Whatever. Aljo is doing three more, terribly. Yeah. Three more questions. We're going to go to you're question number five. You're really no good. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Okay. There you go, Aljo. <laughs> With a win, Jillian Robertson will be in sole possession of the most wins in UFC flyweight history. Which two fighters is she currently tied with? Name one of the two or both, and you can get two points. So there's a bonus point involved oh in this goodness. question. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. That's crazy. we got to name the fighters, right? Yep. All right. That's a two-part question right here. Mm -hmm. um. Oh, 
Well, I guess we're going one point now. I've been vetoed. I tried to give you guys. Okay, one or two. But we get one or we ready? Oh, it's like, they're one of the two. Okay. Ready? No, they're they're going to give you two. They're going to give you two. They're trying to give you a chance to come back, DC. Yeah. Ready? <sighs> yeah. Flip it. Flip it. No. Wait, 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 one. wait, 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 wait. You said straw weight. You said straw weight. She's a fly No, weight. she said straw weight. No, Helly misread I said the thing. Helly said straw weight. No, it's, I on, said, it's on a board. No, it's Helly, like you misread. The you misread. Are three feet wide. <laughs> you misread, Helly. She had Shevchenko. Yeah. It's Valentina and Caitlin. Right? Yeah. So, so, so there's only I one person. I didn't if I else. read it wrong, how does Laura get it right? You Good guys job. are in this thing oh, to screw me, man. man. Every time. All right, number six, Thomas Almeida gets a knockout on Saturday. He moves into second place for most UFC knockouts at bantamweight. Who is number one? Most knockouts in bantamweight history. Who is history? number one? If Almeida gets a knockout on Saturday, he'll move into second place for the most UFC knockouts at bantamweight. Who is number one? Mm-hmm. All right, everybody ready? Wait, 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 wait. You what, look, come on! You just what? I did not look. I did not look. I did not look. Like... Ready? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. ready. Let's that turn it around. Let's go one, two. I don't even know go. if this is even right. Oh, I got it, baby! I got it, Joe! Let's go! <laughs> this guy. Let's go! Let's go! I can't Let's wait to go. see the replay That's on that. I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't cheat. I promise. Let's go! Wait, who you put? Oh, you put Dylan Show. Come on, man. Okay. Dang, Aljo, you know, hey, Aljo, it's really cool how he acts like he didn't know who you put on your life. <laughs> because just, he knows. He sells it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Final <laughs> question, I believe. With a win tomorrow night, Francis Ngannou will become the blank UFC heavyweight champion in UFC history. Okay. This is just closest to no price is right, price is right rules, right? You can go over. He will become the what number UFC heavyweight champion in history? So essentially, how many UFC champs are there? Yes, yes, anyway? yes, yes, yes. I, I just we have to understand. reiterate. Yeah. You didn't like Kelly, the I think, I think really. me and I think me and Laura are tied here at three. So. Are we? Oh yeah, this I got wins two it. points for those two. No, you didn't. Yes, just yes. Correct. No. It's I'm four. Right, let's go. Let's get three. the answer. Okay. Seventeenth is the answer. Oh God. Seventh for Aljo. Sixteen, and then Sanko. What do you have there? I can't see. I I hey, here's the deal. Uh, this is what. Hey, well, Helly, 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 no. Helly, because there was a time when and oh, DC becomes only the 16th heavyweight champion in UFC history. So that puts yeah, me. Yeah, be a heavyweight. Hey, let's go. Helps I beat her, right? Okay. Yeah, you, you beat her, so you're tied. This and this question tied. decides who wins. Heavyweight champions? You are tied at four going into the final question, Aljo. You don't have a chance to win. This is all about pride for you. <laughs> you can leave Double your whiteboard down, Double buddy. It's good. Vicente it's Luque has the third most finishes in the welterweight history with 11 of the UFC. Name, name one of the guys ahead of him. If you can name both, you get a bonus point. So Vicente Luque has the third most finishes in UFC welterweight history with 11. Name one of the guys ahead of him. If you can name both, you get a bonus point. Finishes at oh, welterweight. Does strike force count? No, it does not. It's UFC welterweight <sighs> history. This dude's trying to cheat. He's trying to cheat on me now. He's trying to cheat on me now. Yeah, he's trying to cheat on me now. Four, three, two, one. All right. The answers are. Oh my goodness. Oh, Matt Laura. Hughes and Matt Brown, thirteen what? and twelve. Oh. Well, we all failed. No, 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 no. I had Matt Brown. No, I had them, I had Matt Shut Brown. Look, Lawler Shut and Brown. I tried to get up. them both. I tried to get them both. Shut up. I had, no, Laura. I, I literally had, just saw you writing. No, you didn't I see me writing. Oh, if I believe. We're on Dude, television. No. Like, don't okay. don't cheat, guys. A million people just saw you. Don't cheat, guys. Kids, don't take notes from this man. So, okay. do I win, guys? <laughs> Did I win? Uh, Do we have to fight right, for it? All right, so we're going to have a bonus tiebreaker. Okay. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay, just, 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 just for DC and Laura. The 2020 the <laughs> UFC Hall of Fame class that was announced last oh, year. Oh, my goodness. There's four of them. So there are three individuals and one fight inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. I know this one. You do? No, I don't. 
Okay, we're running out of time. Like, come on, dude, this is crazy. Like, come on. Have, you already, have you already done? I've this? got three, and I mean, I know she doesn't. Have, five, right, we'll five, uh, three, two. two, one. All right, Ratner's correct. Oh, he's, he's the winner. Baby, let's go! Bring the belt up let's on stage, go! RJ. Ladies and this gentlemen, is a, this is an official, the ball, by the way. New <laughs> undisputed under, wait, wait, wait. study up champion of the world, I, Daniel D. Hold on, C. hold on. We're oh, gonna need to look at instant replay because there might be. Have, like, at home. Let's go. <laughs> can we please? Do we have it queued up yet? To, wait, if we can decide wait, for whether DC wrote his answer late or not, whoa, please. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Oh, there's the. Oh, this is no, you guys question. are lying. Oh, oh no, I'm getting set up. No, I've been set up. You I've been set up. You really You guys are trying that. to slander my character. <laughs> I didn't cheat, did I? You relinquished. Aljo, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Bro. Wait. Belt goes away. No. Wait. Belt goes away. What? RJ, take that. Wait. <laughs> Illegal. Jeez, oh, please. my goodness. Two pay-per-views oh. in a row. Let's take a closer look at our main event while we get this sorted out. This is unbelievable. Oh, man. Unbelievable. You hate to see it. You hate to this see it. This goes to the O'Malley Commission. <laughs> I want the O'Malley Commission. Uh, Still! It's been three years that I've been waiting for this rematch, for the revenge. Finally, I get the opportunity, and tonight's going to be amazing. Let him take what he wants, but nothing's going to change, you know? It's going to be the same things that happen again this fight. I'm going to win. I'm going to break him again. You couldn't have mapped out a better way to fight Francis and Ghana than the way Stipe is doing it right now. If the fight stays up, you'll be knocked out. There is no doubt about that. A new era has come. Francis and Ghana has arrived! No! Tonight with Francis, I'm going to smash him. I'm going to walk in there, do my thing, walk out, hand raise, bell wrap my waist, and still. Coming out. All right, here we go. The uh, battle for the baddest man on the planet, part two. Stipe Miocic, Francis Ngannou. A look at the numbers here. And uh, just two bad gentlemen. This is going to be a remarkable fight. I cannot wait to see it. And we have the champ here with us right now. Stipe Miocic making history with each and every fight, man. This, is, uh, this has been fun to watch you run. Um, I'm glad you're not punching each other anymore. You know? So <laughs> it's, it's, it's good that he can just it. talk about it. Yeah, I'm right. over it. I'm it's like too. it's like a long lost relationship right? that you're just happy for. <laughs> <laughs> we were very toxic. <laughs> for, <laughs> hey, we were very toxic for each other. Like we were very toxic. Oh, worst. No, it was awesome. No, it was fun. It was fun. It was, it was a great trilogy, man. You know, and it, well, nothing better with that guy right there. Honestly, it was fun. Well, and and, and now you. I are, mean, it was fun, like not getting punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I love the call out during the weigh-in. That, that was great. Oh, yeah. that, that was great. I'm happy. Trust me, I'm happy about You're it. You're doing well now. You're doing well now. Um, although you do find yourself in a familiar, familiar spot, which is interesting. You know, we talked earlier about you being the Rodney Dangerfield, you know, of, of the UFC. You know, a slight underdog once again, and, and you're the champ. Does it give you any extra juice going into this one? No, I mean, yeah, I mean, of course, but honestly, it's nothing new. It's the same day. I, mean, I can't say a lot. I can't swear, but nothing's changed. I mean, I'm used to it by this point. You know, Vegas hates me, and it is what it is. You you are going into this fight. You look leaner. You got the new hairdo, the glasses. You're all GQ now. You, what, what 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 has changed from the last time you you faced Ngannou? Because he has talked many times about how much he improved, how different he is a fighter. But I I feel like you're different too. Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, with the hair, it was more because of quarantine, and I had a glow up. You know, that works. <laughs> my wife said that she's never gonna let me cut my hair again. But uh, yeah, you know the whole weight thing. I just honestly, I wasn't trying to lose weight. It just kind of came off and just uh, you know felt good and just wasn't trying to keep it on. Just screw it. I was eating, but just kept losing. And but yeah, with Francis, you know he's definitely got better. He's evolved. But I have too. You know I have the best coaches in the world. I have great teammates, and uh, we, you know, we work on stuff all the time. And I think uh, you know if you listen to your coaches, you can go far. I, I got to find out what kind of product you're putting out to keep that up there like that. Man, it's, you got to train well. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> 30, seven years, man, I was just flat. And now I can just look at that. It's great. Yeah, it looks it's good. Great Fab Fabio Chirant. I'm to wake up in the morning, though. It's terrible. <laughs> Fabio Chirant uh, weighing in right now as, uh, as we uh, continue this, uh, this interview. So much uh, has been made of Francis's power. Oops, has this urban legend type status at this point? The first time you guys fought, uh, you know, Fabio you really Chirant. you weathered some of those really big shots. Does that give you confidence coming into this second fight? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, just being smart and patient, don't, you know, the guy drops bombs, you know, he's been knocking everyone out in the first round. His last about five fights, it's been like two and a half minutes he's fought. Um, but yeah, I mean, just if I'm smart, you know, I see it coming and I'll be all right. And in the preparation for this fight, I mean, to look at someone who has uh, two minutes and 42 seconds worth of tape to watch uh, since uh, the last fight, and of course the Derek Lewis fight, oh, how do you go? How do you go about preparing for someone who, you, to a degree, we don't really know what he's added to his game? Well, yeah, I mean, I know he's definitely evolved. I mean, definitely, he's on a great team, great coaches, so you know he's gotten better. Um, and it's hard to watch tape and see what he's done. I mean, there's a few things you can pick up, but. Uh, you know, he's got good striking, and, um, you know, he throw, like I said, he throws hard, and uh, I'll be all right. Though. I'm not worried. Fabio Charant came in at 206 and three quarters, so it looks like they're bringing out the curtain. He's going to try to weigh in again. Uh, he's fighting Alonzo Menafield, of course, a, a late add to this card. Let's, uh, let's listen in here for a moment, champ, if you don't mind, see if he gets it. He's on the weight. They're taking their time. Keeping us on our toes. Can you make it? 206 and a half for Fabio Charant, who will have an additional hour to cut the final. He's got a half pound to make the weight. He gets another hour. So he has an hour, right? Yep. He's looking at hour. Notice. I mean, that's tough. That's real tough. Now, in, in terms of legacy, I mean, obviously, I know you're not much into stats. I've seen the interviews, you know, so you're not really paying attention to, to much of those things. But in terms of winning this fight again, what do you think that puts you in terms of, like, the pound-for-pound pound greatest? Uh, we all know, like, you're going to push the, the envelope further as being one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Um, or should I say the greatest heavyweight of all time? But what do you think it puts you in, in terms of the pound-for-pound pound conversation? You know, I, with that, you know, it, it's great to just be in the conversation. Um, but... That's just, it's everyone's opinion. You, know, like you might have a different opinion, you have a different opinion, I have a different opinion. So, I mean, it's just great to be in the conversation. Um, you know, with the legacy, you know, I just want to you know, be known as a, that guy. I just went out there and fought. And, you know, my legacy is always more towards my children. So when they grow up, when they grow up I want them to be good people and just, you know, be good to everyone else and just work hard. You know, everything's, everything's ever given. It's all earned. Here's uh, Jared Gooden coming to, the, uh, coming to the scale right now. But let me ask you a real quick question about just how things have evolved for you. There's a there's a sitcom that you've shot in L.A. that's coming out, and yeah. you have a podcast now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're getting ready to see you everywhere. What's going on? I want everyone to hear my beautiful voice. You know, I talk so well. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, yeah, I just uh, I don't want to say it too loud, just because I don't know if I'm loud or not. But I, you know, I did a, a comedy. So it's it's gonna be fun. You know, it was a lot of fun. The guys are great. And, uh, 171 and three quarters. Stand up, Jared Gooden. No, God, no, no. <laughs> God. You're an actor now. I mean, more like a dealer. So you grow you you grow your hair, <laughs> you grow your hair, and you become an actor in Hollywood. I mean, that's what, guess what? That's what I do, man. <laughs> <laughs> he adjusts. <laughs> no, He's like no, I uh, just adjust. No, I, uh, you know, it was great. I just got the opportunity to do it. And I was like, hey, I couldn't. You know, it was right before camp. I'm like, what? Well, it was only a couple of days. I'm like, hey, I got to do it. It's gonna be fun. And uh, yeah, and then with the podcast, it was just uh, two of my buddies. We've always talked about doing it, and you know, it was fun, and we love doing it. We can see Jared Gooden. He weighed in at 171 and three quarters. So they're pulling out the curtain again, seeing if he can uh, make it here. Let's uh, let, let's listen in for just a moment. I mean, it'll be a half, right? Because he had on the same underwear as the last guy. Right. Had lost <laughs> four of them a pound. Maybe a sweaty 171 and a half. It's the same exact. They're wearing the same underwear. I don't know. I just want to. I mean, they're wearing the same underwear. I'm trying to help him. Of course, he's going to four of a pound. I'm trying to help him. The, the, the algebra at so Oklahoma fine. State was yeah, like, yeah, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I'm a smart guy. <laughs> Stipe, listen, it's universal now. Everybody considers and holds you in their guard that you deserve now. But when you look at Ngannou and you speak to the improvements, how can you tell? And how fast do you go back to the wrestling seeing how exhausted he got in the last time? Because the first round was absolutely crazy, the way that you stood in front of him. And once you start taking him down, it seemed pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, who knows if I'll go to wrestling again, man. Maybe they beat him on my feet. You know, I know he's a great striker, but I feel like I'm good too. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to show me his cards right off the rip, you know, and see how he plays them, and I'll go from there. You know, Miocic, it was, uh, there were times where we frustrated each other. Oh, it's terrible. We hated each other. But. I never, I never hated you. No, Don't not, you not you hated. We're not hated. We're not hated. We, we hated the situation. Yes, yes. But you got me. But Stipe, I'm a competitor, and I'm not okay with it, so look what I brought. 
I brought my video game. I'm gonna see him virtually. I'm gonna see him virtually. Let me see him virtually. I can beat you. It's over here. Let's go. Walk over here with me, Miocic. Let's see if if I. I, Hey, Miocic, I can't beat you in reality. Let me see if I can beat you virtually. Steve, do you you play this very often? Champ, take a seat. Champ, take a seat right here. This is terrible. Champ, take a seat right here. No, I have a seat. As we get started, I've got it all loaded up. Don't worry. My guy might be boosted a little bit. I need some gear right now. This is Bohovic. Who put? <laughs> oh, you get to play with Jan? What is, wait, what is happening? What is happening? How is this oh my goodness. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Wait. I'm gonna restart the game. No, 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 no. keep going. No, okay. you, no, 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 you, no, you're not gonna get Bohovic. No way, Bo- <laughs> the way Bohovic just killed everybody, it's worse. You, it might be worse. Let's go. It's a totally different weight class. No so, heavyweight, no lightweight. You, so who do you want? You no, no. We have to fight you and I because I'm trying to give my guy a win. If we're even, I should have quit when I was ahead. Honestly, when I'm thinking about it, should have quit when I was ahead. You go red because you're the champ. Move you to the side. All right. To the other side. Okay. There you go. Now let's go to X, and then let's go to heavyweight. Okay. Now we got Stepe. Dude, I look all right, Jeez. all right. I'm playing with Steve Miocic. He's the champion. I want the champ. Okay, right, right here. Daniel Cormier, press X. All right. Let's roll. This for all the marbles. It's for all. I mean, let's go. <laughs> How do you punch? Um, you punch with you punch with right one. You see, look, you see a uh, right one up there. Yeah. The top oh, yeah, one. Yeah, 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 that's, 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 that's not one. a good sign. Bumper. What? Yeah. Good sign, Stipe. No, you punch, Stipe, You punch with uh with the with this button right here. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. I have a feeling Stipe is going to be in trouble here, boys. I'm, I'm, I have a feeling I'm not even telling Stipe how to punch. Stipe, you look great. Oh, shit, your guy looks great. I mean, your guy looks great. Oh, here we go. Oh, we, we, we are underway. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wait, what is going on? Why are they showing this guy how to play the game? He's simplifying controls. Oh, oh Steve, you hear me? Do you hear me talking in the background? Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> oh, I wish, I wish. Stand up, Steve. How do I choke him? How do I choke him? Move that analog. I'm trying to. <laughs> is the controller working? Wait, wait, wait. Where's my guy? Like, what? DC, I okay. thought you knew how to play this game. I really don't. Okay, let get me up, just do Get up, get up, get up, get up. Break your hands. Break your hands. Don't throw me, don't throw me, don't throw me. Oh, get up. Punch him. Get behind your jab. I can't I'm punch. Nice he's, he's, he's like trying to press the button. I told him. That's a lie. He wasn't the same part. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, there he goes. He loses you up. Oh, oh, oh go. 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 Let's go. 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 I'm not. Yeah. It's right there. Oh, he got it. Analog, move the analog. Yo, I don't know how to move. The analog. What analog? Right. Right Get analog. Out of Get me out. Oh, nice right. Get up, DC. Punch. Get up. Oh, you're stalling. Get your ass up. Oh. <laughs> up. Get up, Daniel. Oh, my goodness. How do I get away? I'm trying to keep going submission. I'm going to do thing, submission. Hey, this thing is so small. You know, that's, it's getting bigger. Oh man. Stipe give an elbow. Stipe's just pressing the button. I'm trying to, I'm just hoping for the back. Stipe's just pressing the button, man. Cheat. Just punch. He's a butt masher. Go, go, go. Watch your stamina. Watch your stamina. No, no. Yo, how do I get up? Oh. Oh, Oh, no. Oh. Get up, dude. Get up. (laughs) Why don't you get him off now? What am I doing this for? Oh my god. Who's a ref here? He's got some good boxing. Oh, shoot. Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. <laughs> Come on. Stop me your hands so oh, fast. Let's go. Oh, I'm up. I'm up. Let's go. Yeah. Go back up, baby. Back up, game. We'll do this. You're giving him so much power in this game. Oh, oh, oh yes. I see you, time. Let's go. Let's go. Come here, Let's submit. Go, game Marcus. over. Let's go, Marcus. They're going to make my submit better Let's game. This is terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm losing. I'm out of here. Let's go. Yeah, teach me submission. Stipe. Let's go. What a great sport, man. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm talking. I got to talk to the guy who does the ranking. I got to talk to the guy who does the ranking. Hey, make my submissions better. Hey, me and Marcus over here celebrating. (laughs) We have to get celebrate on this dude. We're talking later, dude. Let's go. I love how excited DC gets. Stipe. I might need a new corner, guys. Hey, the real. Five stars, too. Yeah, five stars for that. I got a five stars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now we must. That's tough.
<laughs> Steve, uh, thanks for being good sport, hey, man. Real, oh, real fight good tomorrow. Good Looking forward to that. This is yes, great. Sir. This okay. is great. Good luck with the TV show. Good yeah. luck with the podcast, and good luck tomorrow night. Thanks, guys. We'll all be watching, man. Good times. All right, let's take a look at what's about to go down in UFC 260. No one has the commitment like this guy. He represents himself as a champion on every level. And you know, a lot of people want to dethrone the champion. And isn't that what it's all about? They just don't know what they're walking up against. Stipe Miocic is the man right now at present. He is the tried, true, and proven. Good. Hands up by your face. He is the hunted, but everybody's talking about the hunter, the predator, Francis Ngannou. The difference is, he looks like a human. Whereas Francis Ngannou looks like a superhero who has just lit this division on fire. That's what? it! He's been on a tear. Through a spectacular run of top contenders in the heavyweight division by brutal knockout. There are people left and right. And even scarier Ngannou, I think you have to give him that shot for sure next. This is a man that is constantly progressing and evolving. He's unstoppable. He's knocking everyone out. With his fourth consecutive vicious first round knockout. And uh, he's going to knock me out, and it's going to be a different outcome. He wants one more shot at Steve Bay. Nope, it's going to be the same outcome. Me winning. Steve Bay is saying, wait a second, I take out everybody in the division without a problem. Oh, now a right hand up top. I don't get it. When you think about the guys he's beaten, what he's done. Yeah! He's defended the title more than any man in history. And Stipe is quite frankly pissed off that people are saying this guy could be the champion. All the doubters. Stipe seems to have been reignited. Stipe and Francis, it shall be done. Let's keep working. Big punch at the top. I have changed a lot. The time between my first fight with Stipe are now. He's better. He seems to be training harder. Aggressive here, Francis. Go. It's almost the time that I've been doing the sport. This dude has always been a fantastic athlete. Oh! I'm twice what I was skill-wise, experience-wise. But now you're starting to see the completed version of Francis. I'm the better fighter, and that's what I'm about to prove on March 27th. But Stipe Miocic is the greatest heavyweight of all time. There's no argument. I'm gonna do what I do. What a way to bolster his legacy. I'm walking out and still. The heavyweight championship is upon us. We keep hearing Francis Ngannou talk about his improvement, and he's been unbelievable. He's been remarkable in his last four fights. Not one has lasted longer than 71 seconds. But it is hard to tell. We can't see how much he's improved, but they, people who train with him can see how much he's improved, Laura. Absolutely. I, I actually talked to Eric Nixick briefly last night, and um, you know, to hear him describe the work that Francis Ngannou has put in in the lead-up to this fight is absolutely incredible, and there has been a very big emphasis on wrestling. I know that they brought in a particular guy, Tony Johnson, out of Iowa State, an excellent wrestler, a very big guy. So, uh, listen, I don't think you can teach someone to chain wrestle in the matter of a couple of years, but if he can get a takedown, if he can give meaning to those level changes, DC, that's a big victory. You know, for me, it's about the honesty level at which Francis is trained. Because we saw a few weeks ago with Israel Adesanya, we saw videos of him training wrestling. We saw his teammates kind of giving him shot attempts. And I even made reference to it. I said, hey, are they actually trying to take it on? I was half joking, but it looked like they were getting to a shot and not really giving him takedown finishes. And then when Jan Bohovic got to him, he was able to take him down. How real are these takedowns that Francis is having to defend in the gym? Because you got to be giving him 110%, exhausting yourself to try and get takedowns. And if you get tired, you switch somebody out. That is what we did with Cain Velasquez. When we could not match him, when we could not go with him for five minutes even, we would go two and a half minutes, fight him as hard as we could, and then somebody else would go in there in order for him to be getting a realistic idea of what he would face now. Because you never can... He'll never feel Stipe Miocic unless he's in the octagon with him. You can't replicate that. 
So you got to go over and above it to try to imp- sure that he's ready for it. Especially for one thing like wrestling, you need yes. to have those realistic looks in order to feel what that feels like, exactly what you're saying. So if you have somebody who's shooting on you, but they're not actually giving you 110% like you're saying, you don't really get to develop those actual reflexes and see what it feels like to actually sprawl, point your toe down so you can slide against the canvas or the mat so that you can know what it feels like to drop your weight on somebody and not have them driving up underneath you and then bringing you back up to your feet. That's what you don't want. So hopefully, Francis has been doing a lot of work in the wrestling department, but not just wrestling work, quality wrestling yes. work and keeping it honest. But can you imagine if we have a Alexander Gustafson takes John Jones down moment in this fight? Yeah. I mean, our heads are going to explode. Gustafson took both of us down. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Gustafson could wrestle. Well, so how, but how different must it be for Stipe? He's so used to fighting D.C., who's obviously a very different fighter than, than Francis. Those are pretty contrasting styles there. So this is, this is a different fight for him. They're very different styles. But, I mean, I think the biggest thing about Stipe Miocic that he doesn't necessarily get all the credit he deserves is the fight IQ. I mean, it was so incredible to see the adjustments that he made from fight to fight to fight with DC and having already stepped in there with Francis Ngannou, having tasted that power, having seen some of the tendencies that he has. I am so excited to see the adjustments that he makes in this fight. I mean, we already know he has all the tools that it takes to get it done, but are we going to see yet another level from Stipe Miocic? Well, he has to have that. He has to have a different level. He has to have a different approach on Saturday opposed to the way he approached Francis last time. And you got to remember, for Stipe Miocic, it's now three years for two guys, right? Three years for two guys. Francis, me three times, Francis. So he's been really in living in these two opponents. So how does he approach Francis after three years away not really knowing what has changed? But I believe all the factors, the smaller octagon, Francis is a improvements, I mean, that are suppo- allegedly uh, out there. Um, he has to make a diff- he has to take a much different approach. If he goes and takes the shots that he took at 35, again at 38, he might not be able to take those same shots. Is the mentality, if you're Stipe, maybe similar to the last time in terms of if I can just weather the storm in the first round? Because you look at Francis, he had 15 significant strikes in that first round. He had six the rest of the fight. Because Stipe started wrestling him. He started wrestling him much more effectively as the fight went on. What I do believe that Stipe gained in round one after standing and taking the shots from Nganu was he showed Francis that he isn't afraid. He's willing to stand up to him. Sometimes it's about posture. And I don't know if this is the right analogy, but somebody said, make yourself as big as certain wild animals. It almost makes them retreat. With a guy like Francis, you have to show him you're not afraid. Because when you're afraid and you're tentative, he just overwhelms you. And we saw that with Jarzinho. Jarzinho was kind of nervous and he was tentative. So Francis finally made up his mind, like, I'm just going to go. Yeah. And when he goes, most people can't stand up to it. Exactly. When he attacked Jarzinho, that was the scariest thing because he just started swinging these bungalow haymakers. <laughs> and I'm just seeing Jarzinho's head go back and then eventually it connects. And you're like, wow, that was scary to see. And that's the type of power... Uh, Francis possesses, it's the greatest equalizer, which is power. Everybody knows this. So even the duration of the fight, if it goes to the fourth round, to the fifth round, that power is still going to be there, which is always going to be scary. And for Francis to have the extra endurance, that's what makes this fight very special for me, because just to see the adjustments he's actually made, being in the gym more often. And I've been training uh, Extreme Couture, so I did get to see him working and did get to see the coaches actually pushing him. So... I didn't see everything else behind closed doors, but that's, the, that's going to be the main tell going further into the fight. That power that he has is, is God-given, right? You cannot teach someone to hit like that. <laughs> it would be nice if you could. But what you can teach people is where to put your feet, how to cut a better angle, how to protect yourself better, how to have better uh, octagon generalship. And those are all of the things that Francis Ngannou has been working so hard on since he fought Stipe the very first time. He was able to accomplish so much on raw athleticism and sheer will. And if this guy has the tool set that we keep being told he has, I mean, that is a scary, scary proposition because that says that we are just scratching the surface of what Francis Ngannou is truly capable of, and that's terrifying. And that's why we talk about what he can be to the world of sports because imagine, you know, for as young as he was in fighting, our sport in general, like you said, he willed himself up all the way to the top of fighting. He was a guy that liked boxing. 
didn't even know mixed martial arts. He willed himself up to that. And that speaks to his childhood, all the adversity he dealt with growing up in Africa and just trying to get to the United States. I mean, you've heard the stories multiple times. Him just having to go through so many things. When he got a chance, he took advantage of it. And it took him as far as it possibly could have with the tools that he has or he had. Let's see if he has gained the things necessary in order to change the result. If he hasn't, he's still really good. He's just not the best. I mean, he's on the cusp of superstardom, but he's also on the cusp of finding himself in a position where that championship may always elude him. All right, waiting on stare downs to come up here in just a moment. Let's uh, transition now to the co-main event, uh, Vicente Luque and Tyron Woodley, a battle of two top ten guys here. Uh, you know, for Woodley, this is his first three-round fight since Kevin Gastelum in 2015. Does that change his approach at all coming off three straight losses, Aljo? Uh, I, I think so. I, I think when you have – those losses in the back of your mind, it really does play a big factor. And it's one of those things that you kind of start to question yourself of whether or not you still got it. And I think uh, being able to, to dig deep within yourself and find the place that got you to where you once were before, I think that's the, that's the secret right there. But being able to flip that switch is easier said than done. And I think uh, this is one of those moments where he has to ask himself, am I ready to, to make that jump? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing if he's going to be able to do that. Uh, <laughs> st st stare downs are on the way right now. We're still waiting for uh, Jared Gooden, who weighed in at 171 and a half. Um, this is Jared Gooden. To, 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 mm -hmm. to make the weight. They're doing a stare down first, though. Yep, so, then he can go back so to cutting. So he can cutting. go back to cutting. Um, All right, now we'll reset it back to the top of the fight card. This bout in the middleweight division live on UFC Fight Pass and ESPN. Mark andre Barrio versus Abu Azaitar. And Barrio and Azaitar is going to be the, the first fight on the card, and all the prelims going to be on ESPN starting at 7.30 Eastern time. Ooh, Finger wagging. I mean, just right in his face, talking to him like he's the adult and Mario's the kid. Yeah, he's taking him to school right now. <laughs> hey, what is happening? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, now he wants to shake hands. Okay. And, and Barrio's like, yeah, you know what? After you point your finger in my face for the last 20 seconds, I would not like to shake hands. <laughs> shake now hands. on to a batch of three prelims you can see live on ESPN. Shoot First up in the featherweight division. <laughs> Just like, oh, you know, son, let me tell you, son, if you don't keep that ball out of my yard. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking Shane Young, the 27-year-old Kiwi, coming up next. He, of course, is uh, set to fight Omar Morales. He's 35-year-old Venezuelan, a season three contender series alum. This is going to be such a good fight, you guys. Young, of course, lost his debut to Alex Volkanovsky. Then seeked out Volkanovsky to improve. I mean, set the ego right, aside, and hopefully all like those improvements will show themselves Bodestis in this fight tomorrow night. Versus Michal Oleg Bukowskis, Mihal Olechechuk, coming up next. And uh, both these guys looking to rebound after stoppage losses to rising Aussie star Jimmy Crute. And you know, these guys are fantastic fighters, but Jimmy Crute mm -hmm. is showing to be next level, right? And he continues to improve. Such a young guy, not even 25 years old yet. Or maybe he is 25, you know, so a fantastic young fighter. Can you imagine being in Fabio's head right now? Three days notice. Three, and, yeah, four days ago, he was not in the UFC. And still has to Period. make the weight, right? Is he going to attempt to make the weight? Do we know, well, or is he, is he done? Because he was a half pound overweight also. He will have that extra time to try and make it if he intends to. Live on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. First out of the shoot in the lightweight division, Jamie Malarkey. I don't want to give away my money. No, I mean, nobody wants to. I mean, you're giving away cash, man. Nobody wants to give away money. It's hard for that. Go through a full-on training camp. I'm going to try to make the weight on the scale. This one's going to be fun. Malarkey still looking for his first UFC win. Came in on a three-fight win streak, but he's a banger. Thank you, fellas. Worthy the 34-year-old Pittsburgh native. All right, next up in the UFC Women's Flyweight Division, Jillian the Savage Robertson versus Miranda Fear the Maverick. Savage. 
Well, this is a big spot for Miranda Maverick. You know, Jillian Robertson has fought everybody. She's been in there with the best of the best. And can Jillian get the fight to the ground? If she can't, she has shown to struggle mightily against her opponents. And Miranda Maverick is a beast. Look at the shoulders on that girl. That's Missouri right there. That's some farm <laughs> strength, guys. Farm strength. All right, moving on now to a featured bout in the UFC's Bantamweight division, Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Thomas Almeida. Sean O'Malley is insistent that he didn't win that fight. Thank you. Um, I even tried to tell him he lost, but he mm. would not accept that, Aljo. Look at the job flexing. Look at the size of the difference in the head. He's massive. Like, O'Malley must be a tall guy for the weight class. He is. He is. Very tall. I'm 5'7", he's a, quite a ways taller than He I. looks big. Thank you, fellas. When he fills out, he is so much bigger than he was. All right, that brings us to the co-main yeah. event yeah. between two of the welterweight division's is. top he ten. Up. The former undisputed Boys champion and, and the that chosen one, Tyron Woodley versus Vicente, the silent assassin, Luke. Man body's good. When you start having kids, you got to watch the dad bod. <laughs> Creeps up on you. I got it. <laughs> feel you, brother. got to watch feel the dad bod, Helly. This is a big spot for the former champion. And Vicente Luque is in line with the level of competition he's fighting. He may be lower rated, but skill-wise, Luque may be the best one that he's fought so far. He looks quite a bit bigger yeah. than Tyron. Tyron's not very tall, no. but he's like thick once he puts his weight back on. Yeah. Especially his bottom half. Against the number one contender, Francis Ngannou. This is the big one. Literally, the big one. Yeah. Both guys over 6'3". Francis 263, Stipe 235, 234. Big time fight. Specimen of a human. He, he's on the precipice, guys. Like, if he could pull this off. Oh, yeah. I mean, Annick spoke to that earlier, right? Over 2 million followers. He hasn't even gotten yeah. to the belt yet. The, right? he star, hasn't even the, potential, the potential star power that's there for him. Star power is out of, the, out of this world. The, he has the, has the story. He certainly looks the part. Man, cannot wait for uh, tomorrow night. Guys, this is going to be... Aljo? It's, this is a geography game. I want you to hide your answers, <laughs> okay. okay? We've well, already seen we what happens here. Is this, yeah. Is this for uh, the I belt learned. again? I don't, yeah, my belt? We, can, we can play for the belt yeah, again. Belt sure, why not? Let's play for the belt well, again. What, Wait my first me? title defense? Okay, okay. This, is our, this is our final game. No. Okay, John. <laughs> the, the Sugar Show Commission does not give you the title, all right? All right, we're going to go easy first. Um, Daniel Cormier was born in Louisiana. What is the capital of Louisiana? All right, this is pretty easy. Yep, let's go. All right, let's get the answer in the wall. Capital of Louisiana is Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Baton. Everybody get that? Not Aljo. Aljo? <laughs> he put three boards. Oh, okay. he put New Orleans. Common mistake. Common okay. mistake. No. We're not right. laughing at you. We're laughing with you. All right. One, one, zero. I'm not crying. You're okay, crying. Okay, let's go. Okay. Aljamain Sterling, born in New York. What's the capital of New York? I almost got that wrong. I almost wrote the wrong thing. This one trips people up, too. Oh, uh, I know it's not. I know it. All right, let's take a look in the wall. Ah! I know it's not. It's Albany. Albany. It's Albany. Albany. Ah! I always forget. Oh, wow. I know Get it wasn't me on the board, City. baby. All right, <laughs> Aljo, I'm glad you saved face there. Ah. The only one that got it right. Get me on the board. All right, so I think we're ones across the board. Uh, Laura Sanko, born in Illinois. What's the capital of Illinois? Okay, turn them around. Chicago, Champaign, and <laughs> Springfield. Okay, I mean, come so on, you takes the lead. <laughs> no, she's we're all one one. Nope. No, she has two. She we has are two. not. She has when two. Did she get two? The first one, you guys both. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll be curious to see if you guys can get this one. I was born in the Philippines because my parents were in the Peace Corps when oh, I was wow. born. So I was born in the Philippines. What is the capital of the Philippines? I'm gonna take a wild guess in the dark. Did you, were you just mouthing something? Right. Manila, the Philippines. Here we go. Uh, no, I'll do How? Were you just mouthing something? No, I was Manila. telling Heli, I know. I was like, I know Heli. Manila. Macau's in China. Yeah. Oh, Who Joe. else knows? That's what I thought. Okay. I was like, yeah. Now, all right, we're not messing around anymore, guys. That was super easy, okay? 
Uh, Miranda Maverick, just 23 years old. She attends Old Dominion University and teaches at ODU. That school is in the town that she currently fights out of. What city and state are both Miss Maverick and Old Dominion located? City and state of Old Dominion. No idea. Okay. All right. I don't know. I don't know. Two, one, time's up. Turn them around. Norfolk. No, come oh, on. Come on. I'm getting hammered. Dude. She's up two on me now. Maybe, no, one. She's up one now. This is for the belt. Two. <laughs> All right. Stipe was born in Ohio. What's the capital of Ohio? I don't even know this. Turn them around. Capital of Ohio is Columbus. Jeez, Akron, let's go. And Columbus. Let's go. You ain't going nowhere. I'm right here. I'm done, so. All right. I will stay in A your lot face of work to be done. Aljo, you got for the work, champ, dude. Aljo. You got some work to do here, buddy. All right. Okay. Uh, Sean O'Malley, born in Montana. What's the capital of Montana? Oh, come on. Our our farm girl has this for sure. Wait, 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 wait. Three. Two, turn him around. One. Okay, DC Oh, wait, stop. Know. No, don't turn. Billings. Billings. Okay. Oh, hell no. Oh, I I'll thought it was just going Montana, the capital of Montana. Maybe like <laughs> Montana City. Montana. Sanko got it again. <laughs> Sanko's up three on me, huh? Okay, Jillian Robertson was born in Ontario, Canada. Ooh. What is the city that she was born in? Hint, it borders Ontario and the state of New York. The town that she was born in borders Ontario and the state of New York. It's a big hint. Uh, the answer is Niagara Falls. Maple did we, syrup? Did we, get, did we get it? Maple syrup? No. No. Maple syrup. <laughs> Montreal. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no this kidding. is crazy. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Uh, Omar Morales fighting out of Venezuela. What continent is Venezuela on? What Finally. continent is Venezuela on? Give me some love. Aljo feeling good about this one. All right, turn around. South America, South America, and South Africa. Ah. <laughs> South oh, Africa? Oh, South Africa? Oh, you South Africa? I knew oh, boy. that. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. That count. I oh, that is a country, folks. my friend. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. my God. Ooh. My goodness, Aljo. I knew that. I though. tried to cheat fast. Okay. Look at the oh replay. It's right, right next to oh Columbia. It's right next to Columbia. I knew that. I knew that. Do we have a replay? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's embarrassing. <laughs> I actually. Oh, oh my god. Oh my gosh. All right, let me hit me with the music, guys. We we need the music on that one. I knew that. I swear. Okay. I don't know why we're Africa. All right. It's crazy. Are we? Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Yes. I'm, ready. I'm down. Oh, the there oh. it is. There it is. Wow. I'm down two. I'm down two to Laura. All right, Manessis Bukowskis, born in Lithuania. What are the colors of the Lithuanian flag? Closest. I'll give you a hint. There, there are three colors in the flag. All right, three, two, one. The answers are yellow, green, and red. Oh, that was close? <laughs> I was close. Not Alex, baby going blue, not navy powder blue. blue. Just la regular navy blue. blue. Not Carolina blue. Man. <laughs> okay, la last one. I didn't I get this know. memo in my notes. <laughs> Aren't I winning? That's the, the fun of it, buddy. It's a surprise. It's like okay, a Francis study. Ngannou was born in Cameroon, <laughs> Batie, Cameroon. How many miles is it from Batie to Las Vegas? As the crow flies, how many miles? Okay, Wait. just closest to. Petit Cameroon to right. Las Vegas as the crow flies. I'm confused by this question. Jay, how, right. how far is it? How, how many right miles from, right Camer from Cameroon to Vegas? Oh, okay. I'll give right you a hint. It's going to be over a couple thousand. All right, turn them around. That is the circumference of the <laughs> earth. <laughs> oh, my God. That is the circumference of the <laughs> earth. Hey, by the way. <laughs> give me by that. Way. I literally put 8,000 first. It is. I'll do it closest. I Bring get some me. bonus points. He for wins at the oh end. Oh my goodness! You the guys, I one. might start crying. Oh I my goodness! Africa, really? 
I feel like this was I feel like this was rigged. My this... whole life, I have dreamed <laughs> oh of having goodness. a UFC belt. There oh is no atom weight division, oh but there is goodness. an atom weight geography division, oh and I just. Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> how, wow. how, how, did, how did it feel? It, it feels. Like, are you doing me now? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, do, I'm you doing you. Okay. Uh, this fight, I mean, this was absolutely amazing. I had really had to dig deep for this win. I mean, Boo. DC was was coming after me, but I tell you what, Boo. I just want to give credit to my team at Glory MMA Boo. and Fitness, James Krause. I mean, he coached me up. Actor. My Actor. high school and geography stalling. teacher. I'll be, she wants I'll, to do I'll be honest. She does footsteps. She doesn't even try to wrestle. She just wrestles. You're a boring fighter. All you want to do is <laughs> lay and pray. What you don't You're know is wrestler. I can't wrestle, oh, DC. Boo. I can grapple, but I can't wrestle. Boo. All you want to do is hug people. Hey, I'll be, I'll be honest. It didn't look very hard for Senko, guys. That you was didn't like give her much of a... sweet, man. Yeah. No, Thank no, you. she beat Thank me you. like two. She beat Thank you. you. Hey, wow. SUNY New York University. <laughs> what are they teaching? They might have been passing this dude to keep him on the mat. Wow, yeah. what kind I of stuff is going on at SUNY New York? Well, I don't believe that because hey, that was crazy. There'll, there'll be a chance. There'll be a chance for you down the road to maybe it's make been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. You know, I haven't studied capitals. I'm going to clean this real All right, quick. guys. Uh, Weigh-in is in the books before we let everybody go. Um, let, let's get some final thoughts on the, uh, on the main event. Stipe and Francis Ngannou. Lord, what do you what do you expect? I know you're still. You're, she's just married. She's just married. in the belt. I, they took my belt really fast. Lord, uh, don't be a crime, man. Like, I want to thank the academy. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, let me collect myself. This this fight is incredibly important for so many reasons. It's important for the legacy of Stipe. It is important for the future of Francis Ngannou. And it's important for the future of this division because you know who's waiting in the wings is one John Jones. And he is going to insert himself into this division. And I cannot wait to see which one of these two amazing fighters is going to be taking him on next. Yes, this is a great fight. And like Laura said, for history, for both guys. You're talking Stipe, who's a firefighter. He's he's a man's man. You know, he's a great dude down to earth. And then you have Francis Ngannou, who's fighting for pretty much his whole entire country, you know. So, it's a this is a huge opportunity for both guys. One guy is to cement his legacy, and the other guy to pretty much, you know, not get to lose two in a row to the same guy after three years. That could be pretty devastating. So, I, you know, it's a big moment for both of these guys' careers. Well, his immediate championship future hinges on this victory tomorrow. Francis Ngannou, I'm talking about. If he loses twice to the champ, um, the only route to him becoming the champion is Stipe losing the title. For Stipe, it's about just further extending himself away from the rest of the great heavyweights that have worn the UFC championship. He is hands down the best heavyweight fighter this division's ever seen. He's the greatest heavyweight of all time. And he will only advance that legacy if he gets the victory tomorrow. This is massive. I mean, there are so many different things at stake for both of these young men. And if Francis can get this done, I'm telling you, it will be the Mike Tyson effect. People will tune in to see a guy, like you said earlier, Helly. The odds will only get bigger for him if he becomes a champ because if Stipe can't beat him, who can? Right. And um, this is a big spot. I can't wait. It's going to be we, massive. We, we love power. Nobody has more power than Francis Ngannou. I, Stipe still, for some reason, so underrated seemingly. Uh, but you're right. He is the GOAT. He is the, he's the heavyweight GOAT of mixed martial arts, yes. period. I, Not I the UFC. Let's make it clear. MMA, 100%. I know everybody likes Fedor, but Fedor is no Stipe Miocic. Stipe is the best heavyweight of all time. Across all organizations. Because if you think the heavyweights of days past can beat the guys that are fighting today, you are out of your mind. Crazy. It's insane that people think that. Well, you know what I wonder what people think at home when they watch the show is when they're watching these, these packages, these awesome uh, pieces that this production staff at UFC puts together, like what we're doing behind set. Well, Laura and I and Al Joe, we're, we're actually watching the pieces. <laughs> you know what DC's doing? Let me show you what DC's doing. I can't wait. He's oh Instagramming. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, I Instagramming. Know. He's Let taking selfies. <laughs> Come this on. This is what he's doing. Oh he's my talking God. about himself. Look at him. Uh, look the light good. skin face. Oh, look at that necklace. Oh, my. Uh, you might have you a necklace. I'm not out here looking good, yeah, you know? Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, I'm Daniel. You know what I'm saying? Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm Come on, man. Al Joe. Unbelievable. I'm Daniel from Lafayette. Hey, I hope, Al Joe, I hope after all this silliness that you actually come back and join us for one time on the, on the show again. <laughs> uh, this was the Way in Show, the second one. We're going to be coming to you again from Jacksonville next time for Laura Sanko, the champ, Aljamain Sterling. 
Champ, champ. Daniel Cormier, I'm Dan Helley. Everybody enjoy UFC 260. Can't wait to watch.